I once made a challenge in Fallout 4 that is still unbroken. And my old PC didn't create the quality I wanted, but those problems are far behind me now. The challenge is a vast challenge with a lot of objectives, but rather than a massive kill or build list, which you often see in other challenges, these are just side objectives and not that significant. Your main goal is to restore the entire power grid running through Fallout 4. Yes, that means every settlement must be connected to Sanctuary by a power grid. The official rules will be my guideline and you can find the red link in the description. So the core of the challenge is super easy. Once you get the workshop in Sanctuary, the Conquest mod places a misc item called Read Me Conquest in your inventory. Open that and you'll find an item called Action Build Campsite under the 8 tab. You can faff this item on your quick bar and I put it on the 1. With your workshop open you see a green border around the settlement called the Builds region. Leaving the area, select your Build Campsite action and as long as the bag is colored red, you are in the Overlap region. You can walk freely there. Once the bag turns green you cannot progress further and must drop the campsite. That gives you an area to explore, but you can only have one campsite at the map at any time. The key is to upgrade it to a workshop, which costs gear and some other material. You then have to draw a power grid using the telephone poles from Sanctuary to your new area. Telephone poles come from the Sim Settlement mod, and you need to get those first. You cannot make a second workshop until all the other workshops have a connection with Sanctuary using both overlapping build regions. But to start Sim Settlement, there's a little perk helping you out called Close to Home. You can actually walk to Red Rocket because the bag never turns green. Both build regions don't overlap, but the overlap regions do. That means you cannot connect the power grid there, but you can walk there. You can then drop a bag inside Concord and as soon as it turns green, upgrade it to a workshop. With your second bag, you can get inside the Concord Museum and you can start your sim settlements. Sim settlements will help you get materials by building commercial plots, to trade with your settlers, scrap items or explore in your limited area. Then connect telephone poles from Sanctuary to the Concord workshop by placing an extra workshop in between Sanctuary and Red Rocket and you have to walk parallel in between both settlements until you find a spot where you can place a bag and a workshop. But enough of that, let's get to it. You start out in Vault 111 and it's important that you hoard every little item you can find because items will forever be your biggest obstacle to progress fast. Once you leave the vault, you can gather everything within that area, but then need to move quickly to Sanctuary using the path you used to get to the vault in the first place. And once you talk to Cotsword, the challenge officially starts. The scrapping mod will allow you to scrap nearly everything in Sanctuary, and this is incredibly tedious, but will provide quite some extra resources. Even though not all things will drop resources, the scrapping mod is optional. You don't have to use it. I used an older version that didn't scrap that much, but once I updated it later, the challenge became much easier. It's up to you to keep the buildings intact or scrap everything. Either way, later you will use sim settlements to progress, so buildings are of lesser importance. And it's also up to you to use the mod. The challenge has a hard mode where you can't even use it, which will make your rely on trading and sim settlements industrial much more. And in a way, that's actually more fun. The first important thing is to create a start for your power lines, and if you look at Red Rocket, you will see the first part you connect to. You can freely walk to Red Rocket because it is the workshop overlap region. This is maybe a bit fake, but you can venture wherever you cannot place the camping supplies. This is important as you cannot create new bases. A new base will cost 4 gear and 4 screws and 15 steel. So gear will quickly become a liability too. Since the camping supplies stay red if you walk from Sanctuary to Red Rocket, you can capture it. However, the build regions do not overlap, which means you will need to place the camping supplies somewhere in between and then connect the power. At first this is incredibly expensive and will cost copper, but you have no choice to do so because you will need to get to Concord. In the museum there will be what you need to start some settlements and that will unlock the cheap telephone poles which only cost wood and steel. So that's a bit of a basic explanation to give you a base understanding of the challenge and the next part I will tell you more as if it was a story. I quickly took Red Rocket and from there I created a second base on the opposite banks of the Sanctuary Bridge. I wanted to cover the entire bridge with build region so I could connect the power through there. The other side of the road would have been much better as I both could scrap nearly the entire forest there for tons and tons of wood as well as cover the entire road to Red Rocket with telephone poles. 
but for now I just quickly placed a temporary line directly from Sanctuary to Red Rocket. Having power connected to Red Rocket means I can now legally use Red Rocket to progress further. You cannot place more than one camping supply ever, so you need to upgrade first. However, you cannot make a long line of upgraded campsites without connecting the power from the main grid to the next base. In other words, the power always needs to be connected to the base you use the overlap region from. Regardless, from there I could quickly make a settlement with in Concord, which after upgrading was actually enough to get me to the museum. Because I could use the new camping supplies to cover the entire main street in Concord. I would end up scrapping the campsite later after I was done there, since I didn't have the supplies to upgrade it to a workshop. The museum and also the Concord public tunnels would give a ton of experience, materials and of course my first settlers for sanctuary. So the first levels I focus on increasing basic skills for survival, inventory space, lockpicking and gathering caps and ammo. Once I picked up the ASIM sensors, I could start some settlements and began setting a main base in Sanctuary. Of course, some agriculture plots and a lot of residential plots and a handful of other plots as well as commercial plots. Those commercial plots are insanely important and your first prio is a doctor and a general store. You cannot create more than one general store, so don't waste your time on that. Well, you can, but they will have a shared money and inventory. Every day the trader will have refreshed supplies and you can start trading your ammo and maybe some other materials to get valuable items from the trader that contain gear, copper, screws and circuitry. Please make sure you mark them as tech for search as soon as you run out of them while building stuff with them. And I tend to save the pre-war currency as well also for trading, as they are really valuable. Buildings have an array of prerequisites to upgrade, which means more and better stuff, more food and so on but they often need supplies like aluminium and adhesive to upgrade. So stock your workshop well and make sure your settings are correct. The main thing is happiness before they upgrade. And for example, martial buildings need industrial buildings to upgrade. A quick way to boost the happiness is to place some recreational plots. Also make sure you use the agriculture plots and don't farm old fashions way because once they upgrade, they provide much more than the old way. But you can keep a patch of directly planted supplies to have to not spend too much settlers on agriculture at first. For example, if you have 10 corn, the settlers will initially provide more food and thus attract more settlers. You can only have four loose beds according to the challenge laws, which will help you attract new settlers. So make sure you build those, but also check your sim settlements settings that new settlers always pick unbuilt residential plots and build their home there, else they will just occupy the beds and will stop your settlers income. Every residential plot will give you tax money the tax money you need, so if they sleep in a bed instead of a residential plot, you will not have money from the settler. After that, I built another settlement on the other side of the road and completely scrapped everything. I've had my eye on Abernathy Farm all this time, as I thought that it would make a great agriculture settlement with massive expanding possibilities. For no useful reason at all, I scrapped the camping supplies in Concord and first placed it a bit northeast of Sanctuary to plunder that corner which wasn't much, so I scrapped it again and actually placed it next to the vault 111 entrance where I also placed the workshop. The loot was something nice, but nothing worth doing, so I decided to dissolve the settlement first. However, dissolving a settlement is one of the reasons you can't just plant settlements everywhere at minimum cost. First off, Conquest only allows you 10 extra workshops. So dissolving becomes inevitable, but the official rules state the following. You are allowed to dissolve workshops once power runs through them, however you must leave behind a way station with the following items. You need a bed, a chair and a table, a fire barrel, a lantern, a water pump, at least 4 crop plots, a minimum of 3 power, a light source like a bulb. Both the power and the light source must be connected to the main grid. And lastly, a total of 10 defense. You don't need to have settlers, only in hard mode. The prerequisites for dissolving a workshop are a bit higher in a hard mode as well, as you need one of every possible furniture. So you're gonna need a chair, a bed, a table, and then you need like a chest or a cabinet and all the other possible furniture things. If you get something from Picket Fences book or something, that will be added to the challenge as well. Especially the defense will cost you daily on oil and circuitry. Those are pretty rare early on. And not only that, the power and the light source will also contain very expensive materials. The crop plots can just be, for example, four carrots. It's literally four items, so you don't have to look at 
four mud fruit because they give one and or eight carrots because they give a oh, half. No, it's just literally four items, any form of food items. Purely for my own sanity, I decided to send one settler there as well. Conquest settlements usually don't attract settlers at all, but you can send them from, for example, Sanctuary, so that's not a problem. And because I had a whiner running around complaining how hard life was, I gave him his own little caretaker spot and dissolved the settlement, leaving him with a proper place to call home. Vault 111 is an instance, and you can always freely walk through any instance, no matter how large it is. For example, Good Neighbor or Diamond City. They will have enough supplies and support to sustain your fragile sanity, but be aware that it does not count for any non-instant cities. For example, Concord or Lexington, or even the city around Diamond City instance. You will need to progress through that with settlements and power lines. You can actually place a workshop in an instance, but you cannot connect the power and I tried scrapping the entire vault, but dissolving the settlement would cost me more than the loot I could actually scrap there, which was basically some chairs. Plus you cannot dissolve a settlement without being connected to the power grid, so you'd literally lose one of your 10 workshops permanently if you do that. Once you dissolve a settlement, you get it back in your settlement pile, of course. After that, I did some area exploring, placing a campsite here and there, doing some looting and then dissolved the settlement where I scrapped the big forest. I did try to put up a beacon, but then it all got a bit jiffy and I couldn't send settlers from all the settlement there, so I just placed what I needed there and dissolved it. But not before I used real telephone poles and actually followed the road with the power lines. Using the Sanctuary Banks outpost, Dun outpost in Concord, the Forest outpost and Red Rocket build region, I was just able to make a proper connection with telephone poles using the old power grid system. So the poles that were originally there already. You can actually place connectors on existing poles if you have the copper to spare and you can save on telephone poles then, but copper is quite rare in comparing to wood and steel, so be careful with that. I decided not to power the Concord main road to the museum, but actually take a little back road to the east, since that also had an old grid and then move that to the T-split. I placed several workshops along the road to the east, to the south of Abernethy and also tried on several occasions to shortcut my way through it, but in the end I managed to place three new workshops in such perfection that I could cover the entire road, which will be vital later to explore down south. The power grid to Abernethy was pretty much set, and I could talk to Abernethy and he will of course send you to Olivia Station to retrieve his daughter's locket, which is actually an objective to connect the power to. Every major satellite array or power pylon needs connecting. Having four new workshops also gave me a massive area to explore, and pretty decent loot places like Wicked Shipping Fleet Lockup and Gorski Cabin. Mobs usually respawn around such objectives, but not always. Later I plan to connect back to the grid and move to Corvica, which will give me some decent new sediments too. But first I must go to Olivia, and that comes with a massive place to explore, not to mention a challenge objectives, namely Ticket Excavation. There are a handful of quest objectives you need to complete, and one is Pull the Plug which you can do just there. Creating several workshops from Concord to the west allowed me to get there with only three new workshops. At this point I dissolved some, including the one on the opposite side of the Sanctuary Bridge and the Dunout Post, which also got a settler, and actually saved my life once. This is the great thing about dissolving settlements and leaving defense. There's always a place to sleep, since you must play on survival, and a turret nearby that can help you stay alive, and that is also the intention of the challenge. A safe place for a poor power grid employee to build his power lines. Now completing the pull the plug is important, because after the water is drained in a few days, it will become the first place a lot of raiders spawn, and that means a lot of copper. Scrapping the rifles, the pipe rifles especially, and gear and much more loot. You'll need to upgrade your scrapper perk once to pull copper from the rifles, however. The next outpost got me close to Bedford Station. Clearing the ghouls there gave me a lot of loot. At this point I could only place a few more outposts unless I dissolved some. And that meant I need a lot more copper and a lot more new rare materials. Having a power grid that deep in opened a massive area and several crossroads I could take actually to progress further. Now something I should have done much earlier but definitely did now was to build some advanced industrial plots. The normal industrial plot only becomes a scrapyard for now. It's not even that good to have, even if you have settlers to spare. The most amazing ones are actually advanced industrial plots, for example the iron mine. This is a mini instance in your own settlement. Placing it in sanctuary, it will become a great income for steel, concrete and other rare materials like copper or even nuclear materials. 
You can enter the instance to pick up a lot of metals as well, which gives you a strong boost in rare materials as you can strap each type of ore into multiple materials. All this time I've been saving as much as possible caps, and I had about 2500. With 2000 I decided to build some gunner cages, as they will provide much needed ammo and advanced combat armor, weapons and even more loot. Cages are, by the way, a requisite for your challenge anyway. While I was building my happiness finally past 80 and either because I was in Sanctuary or the happiness was sufficient, nearly all my agriculture, residential and in one commercial plot started upgrading to level 2. One agriculture plot even to level 3. Before that it could take days before even one or two were upgraded, which was a wise lesson for me to learn. I used a switch system that I could power on and off on the cages and surrounded it with turrets and martial plots. Then turn the power on to come back a few days later to see what will spawn. And of course now it's a good time to return to the ticket excavation where a raider kill Bonanza can start. If you have a settlement here you can actually scrap everything they added, like the sandbags which give tons of cloth, or raiders so you can later sort out the loot from the workshop. On the bottom you'll find Sully methods, who turned bad guy. You actually helped them with a quest before. Now you can scrap the Mylurx too, or set them free, some will become hostile though. With multiple settlements growing, it is time to get to Olivia, and the next workshop brings me incredibly close to it. With a campsite that can easily clear the zone around Olivia already, but it looks like the raiders got pretty much wiped out already by a bunch of mole rats. All the better for me, before I go in, I return to Sanctuary to clear my inventory and maybe have some fresh gunners in my cages. I am building quite the base at the Tickets Exposition and hope to send well armed settlers here too to keep the raiders out. While I return regularly to scrap some stuff or hunt some raiders, maybe uh, some kind of military outpost so to speak. Several bases will spawn random mobs or events almost on a daily basis. And for example the campsite outside Concord has a lot of encounters. Some endearing and others terrifying. The gunners in Sanctuary become increasingly dangerous and advised is to save before engaging. Sometimes running into a major or high ranking gunner brings instant dead and it seems that they only become lower quality if you keep trying to exploit it by dying and saving. The faraway base became a good point to drop off my gear. I found two random settlers and I couldn't specifically assign them to anything in the settlement where I found them but I could move them to the ticket as well. Now this base looks actually a bit more like a good place to put some industrial buildings for resource gathering. Also the gunners became quite strong and that supplied me at least with some good helmets and more combat armor. Red Rocket finally got to 80% happiness as well and instantly buildings started to upgrade. Costing a lot more power in the progress and currently copper becomes a real problem because of it. With the locket in hand it is now time to run to Abernathy farm and bring his farm to the Minutemen cause. After scrapping a bare minimum on aesthetic features, I connect the power from the workshop on the southern road. My plan is to use the massive room in the back to make a thriving industrial city supplying me with resources. Not much later I run into a stunted Joe guy, which is quite the foe at this level. Investing in a copper shipment was my last hope, but the cheapest was 2900. That cost me everything I had to gather enough money for it, but the result was satisfying. Part of the copper goes right back into the gunner cases, as they supply me with useful armor, weapons and ammo, and also built the first two radio cages, as I found many yet in the trickets that actually complete the radio cage part. Maybe a good idea to check out the rules real fast and see if I made some progress so far, and it's rather bleak, and not much has been done. Once your agriculture plots start upgrading they begin to give more food. Farming those manually will help you a lot to get the food supply. In combination with dirty water which you can get from using bottles on a river, you can make noodle soup. A cheap food only costing razor grain and regaining both hunger and thirst. Of course other food like melons do that as well or just harvest them to sell them off for some extra profit. Abernathy farm now can take a beacon and several improvements as well causing new settlers to flock to the settlement. So now it's time to progress to a second very important site, the robotics disposal grounds. They're just northeast of Sanctuary and only a small distance away from USF satellite station Olivia. The sentry bot there you can send to other satellite arrays by using the holotape. At this point I placed the very last possible settlement and I have to now focus on dissolving them by making bases. And this is a problem as my cages drained a lot of my copper and even a shipment of copper got spent quickly. Placing as much as I can and exploring the outskirts will be my next immediate goal and as well buying whatever I can from the traders every day. I probably should dissolve Garwood because their happiness dropped to 12% so I can't wait to do that. 
I carefully visit every single settlement every day, I harvest the crops and check buildings, and it was good for almost another 2k gold. Unfortunately, it was Leon next to it that was nearly done already. I used the Gorski cabin to set up a base there, and I only needed a generator and one more turret to finish up. With an extra haul of oil, I could also dissolve garbage. Just to create it right after again, to check out a lonely settler who was sitting on the dam. Since all settlements are connected to the grids, you can reactivate them any time you like, so you can use the campsite to explore further, even if that workshop is already dissolved. This can help you if you need to overlap a region, for some reason, because you can't connect the grid or whatever. So just after dissolving, you can actually place a new campsite pretty much on the same spot, or just a little bit to the side, whatsoever. After dissolving several bases, I have the workshops available to expand again, and my first goal was to get Tempines Bluff to at least grab the quest. Another quest from Red Rocket failed unfortunately, because there was no way to get there in time. Another settlement that is really close by is Starlight Drive-In. This massive settlement was surely restocked by steel and wood supplies. While making an in-between settlement in Bedford Station, since I'm already so close to the real settlement, I can scrap a lot of trees there as well. Enough to get the power grid all the way from the ticket to Starlight Drive-In. And with that power grid connected to the base before Starlight, I'm allowed to capture the settlement itself. Best not to scrap the large buildings, they will leave some unscrappable residue. But other than that, it's resource heaven and insane space to build a large base. Since the bases are so far apart and walking becomes troublesome, the next step is to get the local leader perk to level 1 and start making supply lines. At least from all significant bases. Then buying another shipment of copper, Sanctuary is generating a lot of boulder cups each time already, and close as much bases as possible. A settler in Starlight Drive-In gave me another quest which I really need to connect to Covenant and Teffington. So it's going to be a gamble if I make that quest in time. With the copper and the scraps from Starlight I have enough supplies to make a decent progress, at least leaving Concord permanently by dissolving Kadira base. I decided to put both camps within the open area just outside Concord, as a special event happens almost daily there, and this way you can quickly dispatch enemies without much effort. Next steps are to dissolve the bases going north to Olivia as much as possible, but of course not the base that is still needed to connect to Tempines Bluff. Going south, despite taking a small detour towards Covenant, might help me connect to Lexington afterwards and even get their quest completed by clearing out Corviga, which is going to be my plan going forward. Now let's explain a bit about lenient exploration. It's a bit vague and feels like it's not really cheating, but it definitely is. Lenient can be considered as I'm exploring the outskirts of a base, I see an enemy due to hearing shooting and more. This enemy is obviously outside my exploration area, but I can shoot the enemy from within. Afterwards you can go and loot it and then come back. It's called an adrenaline rush of sorts. If you would abuse this, for example, to enter an instance or a cellar or a house that is outside your exploration range, then you are cheating. Any instance must be within at least your campsite radius, and creating or activating settlements require at least one settlement right next to it. And that settlement, of course, that you want to activate need to be connected to the power grid. So yes, kill, loot, out, but no deep exploration. You have 5 seconds per settlement you own to go somewhere and back. So oil is becoming a bottleneck, and to be fair, I never really bought much of it, so that goes on the tech for search list as well. And after dissolving most bases, it was time to expand towards the south. Getting from Starlight Drive-In to Covenant cost me 6 settlements, which is a steep price. Especially since I need an extra 2 just to make a small detour, else my power grid couldn't connect. Now it's important to get Covenant from my own, so there's a fight at hand. Luckily I was able to fork from one of the first settlements of those six and get to the Covenant compound with a campsite. Took me some charisma checks, but I finally managed to keep Covenant intact and side with the Dr. Chambers to dispose of the synth. This will enable me to use Covenant packed full of people including a good doctor and an excellent trader. Of course I have to talk to Jacob first to unlock the workshop. Overall Covenant won't be overly useful, but for now it's a good bulwark to fall back to. And next stop is Steffington Boathouse, packed full of bugs, but luckily I can simply lure them to Covenant, which will take care of them in a heartbeat. Connecting to Teffington cost me another settlement, and with that I'd like to explain a bit more about the workshop and conquest settlements. Once you place your little bag, you have a campsite. 
if you would place the workshop on top of that campsite, you pretty much know for sure that your borders will connect with the base as long as you place the campsite back exactly on the edge of it becoming placeable for, from red to green. However, if you want to connect two settlements and only have a small gap, you can overlap regions by simply moving the workshop building much closer to the previous settlements. The border will then overlap and you can really easily connect to the bases. For Teffington, I still place the workshop a little too far from the in-between settlement, but I manage with small millimeter pushing to finally connect the towers. That means two new settlements are added to my permanent repertoire and they will be good for settlers income and more. Rebuilding this whole settlements become a bit buggy now, or at least some get buggy, as in they remember the stats from when they were dissolved. So now they can't really rely on the stats anymore and really have to look at yourself to set up a proper outpost. Relying on the settlement stat was never a goal anyway. Stats like food and defense don't get tracked if no settlers present. For food, you simply need four food, regardless if they give 0.5 or one food stats. For defense, you can easily get away by placing a powered laser turret and also a guard post. This can help you trade some of the resources like oil for more rare resources like fiber optics. Next up, I can simply campsite from Starlight Drive-In to do something I should have done a long time ago. Namely, rescue Trudy from Wolfgang and Simone. Her shop will not only have not a shared inventory with the settlement shops, so I can get more copper, gear and oil and other resources. And only a few steps outside we have Trash Con Carla, who will start traveling your settlements also with a unique inventory. Definitely should have done both a lot earlier. Trash Con Carly also carries more types of shipments like oil, but still no gear shipments. The daunting task of dissolving settlements can proceed, but not before we visit the outskirts of Malden. Malden is a bit of a forgotten town in Fallout. It has some decent areas like Medford Memorial Hospital and Malden Center. But the city itself doesn't have too many houses that are not shut tight. At the same time I spent some resources reinforcing and growing Tefton Boat House and with great success, because that's where our first cannon attack happened, right at the moment I was trying to go to bed after a long exploration. Luckily I survived the encounter and the rare gunner brought me a nice upgrade. A little up the road I ran into a sentry bot, but it was an easy kill while luring it to Tefton to let them finish it off. And now it's finally time to take on those super mutants in Medford Memorial Hospital. This massive building is loaded with meat bags and treasure. Two medical rooms full of microscopes and high supply of pipe rifles made my gear and copper supply get a massive boost. Plundering took me three halls to get all the stuff back home, just to drop it on the floor and scrap it right there and then. I tend to scrap everything by throwing it out of my inventory on the floor in a settlement and then go into workshop mode and just scrap it all. This way it's much lighter to haul all the raw resources around. With all that done, I replaced the camps I needed to enter for Memorial Hospital for a settlement. And I have more than enough to dissolve all eight settlements needed to get Covenant and Tevington. Before I connect to Lexington to continue the main quest, I prefer to clear out Malden in its entirety, which will cost me some resources, but especially the station will be another great resource gain. I already built everything needed in Caldera Outpost so I could dissolve it, but of course I needed a settlement to connect another settlement too. That's why I also keep the one near Tempines Bluff open, as I still needed to connect the power grid before I can dissolve it. Malden is a good farm, and I could really scrap much more than I thought. Cars for steel, but also a lot of lockers, each give 20 steel and 20 screws, which is insane. Other than that, some decent instances like Slocum Joe's offices, with tons of cash in the vault, and Malden Middle School basement, which is actually Vault 75. Many gunners, including two commanders, live in that vault, and they are not really happy with my arrival. Tons and tons of treasure, mostly ammo and gear await me and it took me a few hours to clear them out. Really my first dungeon in a way. Taking the detour to Molden was definitely a good move, as I went from struggling to get the right resource to having a massive surplus. In the very same settlement that covered the vault and the offices we have the massive metro station Molden Center. This place is your first dungeon style encounter with synths and it has several synth patrollers who pack insane good gear. If you haven't upgraded yet to combat armor tanks that encounters or cages, the gear they drop might be a massive upgrade, not to mention tons of microfusion cells and loot. In the end I run into an encounter with synths and at last stand of the remaining raiders including a familiar name, Helter Skelter. 
This is one of the raid leaders that is required for the challenge. With the Akka kill I made when raiding satellite station Olivia, I have 2 done and 4 to go. The following example proved the effectiveness of my bases. While expanding towards medtech research, I suddenly got ambushed. A flock of ghouls, spearheaded by a glowing one, charged towards me. I rushed towards my two bases in Malden and they quickly disposed of the foul creatures. Even dissolved settlements will always fight for you, and when mobs regularly spawn near bases, the bases can dispose of the monsters themselves, making the commonwealth safe and sound. After clearing out medtech research, which had just low to average loot, I brought all resources to Teffington and scrapped whatever I didn't need. That included most gear and weapon too. Overall, considering I built three more settlements and also already filled them with everything I needed to dissolve, I was relatively satisfied with the 60 plus gears and more than 70 copper. But that was including at least half a shipment I bought earlier. The only near future problem might be oil at this point. The 150 on pre-war money will also be nice for sale and the tons of ammo was really worth it. With all the new bases I run out of ASIM sensors, so I have to make some new ones. Luckily the resources needed for this task are not the ones I need for settlements, being steel, circuitry, crystal and fiber optics. Regardless some of those are extremely rare. 10 pack ASIM sensor built however is not too smart to make as it gives no discount of the 1 packs and both give 12 experience, so making 10 lose one instead will give you 10 times more experience. If you need frags, you can make cheap ones who pack quite a punch called the MFC grenades for relatively common resources, with exceptions of adhesive. But if you've got enough of that, you might even start selling them for cash. Checking my bases, the industrial Abernathy farm is hauling in quite an amount of ore, providing me a decent amount of copper and even more oil. I decided to dissolve the Crete outpost all the way north after all and move all the remaining settlers to the Molden settlement. The chance I return here often will become really slim, so no reason to keep it up for reformal materials. Moving to Cortega is now the only priority, so I start building down from Starlight Drive-In. Since I'm high enough to upgrade important skills like Scrapper, I focus on everything that gives me resources, as well as main damage which is single target rifle and gun nut. In Lexington I set up two bases and complete them as well, one in the parking garage which also has an instance with several ghouls and the other one near the red rocket shop. This way I can get both rest and have turrets to defend myself. As I clear Lexington building by building I just find low level ghouls and raiders. Taking so much time getting to a relatively early quest objective does have benefits for not being undergeared. After a while I have used four bases to get all the important instances. The super duper mart has a decent loot pool but other places like the Lexington Apartments are just small. Then it's time to clear Corvega. I can one shot most raiders with a sniper rifle from Lexington itself and after that I clear the remaining raiders outside and place a settlement pretty much south of Corvega to cover all the entrances. Corvega raiders are really weak and it doesn't cost me much effort to clear the raiders and Jared in sight. Jared being another one of the mandatory raiders leaders to stripe off my list. I collect everything from all bases and complete them as much as I can, but I forgot to bring food from at least two bases. I plan to keep the most southern base so I can build my way from there to Diamond City and dissolve the rest as soon as I can. Dragging almost 1000 weight to Starlight, it's quite a task, but once I'm there I sell as much as I can to the local trader. With a nearly 5k profit I buy another copper shipment, all the items with gear, circuits, oil and other rare resources as well as shipment of wood. Wood is becoming somewhat scarce because each telephone pole actually costs 6. My first and immediate goal is to run north and hand in the main quest so I can progress that further, but I find all the stuff I need to expand as well. Dun outpost didn't get far enough to connect to Ten Pines Bluff so unfortunately I had to make another outpost in between. Well as far as we got because there was no room for a base in between. Luckily you can resolve that by placing the campsite pretty much wherever you can. For this you stand between the two bases you want to connect and walk in a parallel line equally distance from both bases until you can place the campsite. After that you walk back and place the workshop itself in between both bases. This way your base will overlap with both bases. You can even use the caravan goods if you're close enough to be near a base with a supply line. For Templines Bluff I decided it was time to make a proper base again, so I bought two shipments of 200 and three shipments of 100 concrete and surrounded the base with a concrete wall. Being a relatively small outpost it might be hard to get 15 people in there, but whoever managed to live in the settlement will surely be as safe as in Covenant. 
Concrete builds incredibly well in combination with sim settlements as the large concrete floor blocks slide perfectly under a sim settlement fault. At some point Sanctuary was under attack and I walked back passing by Station Olivia. This was overrun by raiders, but much worse than that, the outpost there was completely gone, destroyed. Some crops, a bed and an open-ended power grid remained. I decided to first clear out the raiders and then put down a new settlement down the road a little. This way not only could I connect the power grid nice and neatly along the road, but also away from the direct spawn. After handing in the quest for Tempines Bluff, I get sent to Sunshine Tidings Corp, but I don't feel like going there yet. It will cost me probably four settlements to get there, but the loot will be relatively low. At this point I have a lot of open ends and choices need to be made. I can go directly south and complete the main quest or expand to the east. Malden gave me so much resources that I got a massive boost, so I'm thinking about clearing the entire island first where Malden is on. It's not that big and you got another two settlements and also good instances like Sorgus Ironworks. In a way I feel like clearing the entire northern part of the map and even get as far as being able to go to Far Harbor. But let's start with the area around Malden first. So we have old gullet sinkhole and leads to a house with a chained up door, but I can simply scrap the door being able to enter from the other side. After clearing out that place and killing the dead girl guarding it, I put another sentiment north of it. Two important objectives there, a mass fusion containment shed and general atomic scaleria, which I both want to connect. After that we'll need at least three more to get the settlement just south of old gullet sinkhole, mainly because they will send me a little further to clear out some super mutants in a camp nearby. And I spent some time running up and forts, doing chores and getting more resources from traders. I did notice I could only recruit up to 17 settlers in each settlement and this is connected to your charisma. So I was thinking about maxing that too. It doesn't really matter too much as it has some but overall little influence on your resources. Of course the taxes come in handy. There are not much restrictions on what you do with the sim settlement option but advice is not to make it overly hard on yourself for no reason. General Atomics is a good place and I think I'm going to make a permanent settlement there, or at least for a while. I placed the workshop but I instantly regret that as I didn't cover the entire base. Good time to talk about scrapping a settlement and placing it a little further. Before you scrap a settlement you have to dissolve it. And you can't dissolve unless the full way station is built, with a tent, defense, fire barrel, light sword, food and so on. After you dissolve the workshop you can actually scrap the settlement, which is perfectly fine. But it comes with some risk of course, if you place it a little further you might not be able to connect the power grid if you haven't done that properly. Because your borders don't connect to the other settlement anymore. Also you have to make sure you pulled the power grid all the way through it to be able to build further. However you can't build that far. Because your settlement overlap region is gone, other than that it has no bonuses. So very ill advised and only use it just to place the base a little further or just to grab an entrance or correct an error in any case. I didn't cover the entire General Atomics area, so just wanted a bit more to the center. To my great surprise I could scrap almost everything from the floor in the General Atomics, so I cleaned the place up nice and tidy. I noticed sometimes the game freezes when you dissolve a settlement. Quick tip to actually always sleep for an hour and save the game before dissolving any base. Another thing that haven't led into crashing is to first transfer the items from the workshop and then dissolve it. My thoughts are that another mod's items is interfering with some of the workings of the mod. So first pull everything out and then scrap it. Since I run out of bases, first priority is to go to Lexington. I will push one more base deeper south and will dissolve the four bases currently there. I run into a cute doggy which I helped, she followed me for a while but I lost her afterwards. I decided to check on settlements and especially in Abenati I did notice that high industrial settlements do give tons of resources. From purified water to sell to a good amount of oil and a lot of ceramics for some reason. Red Rocket was always doing good on happiness so they can handle a lumber yard to enhance the wood income. And another lumber yard for sanctuary because this will stabilize my wood income. The cage fight was quite the battle. A gunner mayor, captain, brigadier and lieutenant several sturdy combat gear sets and good weapons to equip and settlers with. Trading was also good, even Carla had a ton of good junk to buy, not to mention the 2000 bottle caps I grabbed from the sanctuary workshop. I moved north to check on Tempines and finally closed down outpost there indefinitely. I will not return to that corner anytime soon. Tempines bluff is also looking good and I remember there's a small outpost a little to the northeast. This outpost is called 
outpost Zimonia, and it has a mighty high radio tower. Needlessly to say, I want it. I even need it. I planned to only need two outposts to get to Zimonia, but I was wrong. The first settlement I could easily connect to the Tempines, but for the second settlement I was trying to place the campsite and eventually I could place it. Unfortunately, I didn't connect with the first settlement I placed it, but with Zimonia instead. And this is where you can't grab Zimonia unless you fix the second settlement. The rule, all settlements must be connected to Sanctuary before you can take or build another settlement supplies here. This means I have to finish building the second settlement, dissolve it, scrap it, move it closer to the first settlement so I can connect those two. However, you can build in the second settlement, so make sure you push your power grid, albeit not connected to the main grid, as far as possible to outpost Simonia, so that you can much more easily connect it later. Outpost Simonia is a bit cramped. After settling there, I can build up and around the radio tower, so after all, it looks rather cool. Steel and fiber optics are at this point non-existent, so even the most basic resources are becoming scarce. Since I have a decent amount of money, I'm thinking about doing one more trading round and buying shipments of wood and steel with it as well. Since I encountered Ness while she was attacking a settlement, I found a paper, which gives you a side quest to explore Skylines Flight 1981. This area has a great farm as it occasionally resets the loot and a lot of random encounters occur. If you want pre-war commonwealth, this is the best place for you to farm the clothing. From one of the settlements needed to get to Zimonia, I can campsite the overlap region right on that spot. I also want to connect the Galeria with a power grid from that side, so I have another route to walk through on my way to the north. I also run into an Assaultron, which I managed to snipe easily. While going full circle, I went back once and slept a few times, and Skyline sure is a busy busy place with constant loot refresh and mob spawns. Since this is a game mechanic, you can use it freely to your advantage. The reward is not that impressive and you won't be going into that direction that often. Now it looks like there are still some gunner camps in the highway in the sky spa skyline. So I plan to drop a campsite and explore further that way, but not before I dissolve all these bases here, except General Atomics Galeria. And after that, Caldera Outpost is still very close to Green Top Nursery and Farani, relatively close to County Crossing. Both settlements requested 8 through Preston Garvey, so I certainly get both and visit the National Guard training yard is the next step for me to take. When traveling to Kadira, I quickly clear mass fusion containment shed and almost forgot a radio tower, 3SM U81 up north. You can extend the sieges and you will get more radio stations to listen to. I needed some steel as well, so I stole a bucket from Greentop Nursery, they became hostile right away, hopefully it won't last too long. As I progress down, I need three extra settlements to get to County Crossing, one of them flat in the middle of the National Car Training Area, which means killing tons of zombies and a sentry bolt. The place has good loot, and also three instances, and even two power armors. I do one more resource run, and I do spend a good amount on wood and steel shipments, hoping that the industrial cities really start picking up soon, as the shipments are expensive. Before clearing the National Guard training yard main instances, I complete and dissolve as much in settlements as I can, but this time oil becomes a bit of a scarcity, so I must go looking for that after this. And of course, gears are at all time the resource you always run out first. Greentop Nursery gladly joined our side after clearing the National Guard training yard, and I'm not sure if I want to use this base for anything special or not, but at least we won't be low on mud fruit anytime soon. It is good to have a settlement this deep in as a dumping ground, as running back to Taffington and Covenant became a bit tiresome. Another supply round where I bought another shipment of wood, steel and even oil from Thurston and Carla. While moving to my favorite industrial settlement, which is of course Abernathy Farm, they just got attacked by gunners, so the timing was perfect. And seeing their massive supply of oil canisters, I regret spending the money on oil earlier. Also, I still see a lot of gears and copper there, so it definitely turned out to be a successful settlement. I lost a settler in a massive cage fight against the gunners, but gained a decent amount of good combat armor and weapons, even a polar helmet. At this point, I have enough resources and shipments with me to dissolve everything and expand in one direction. I ran into a legendary Alpha Deadclaw, it's not as strong as a Savage, but it's definitely a scary foe. I decided to add a few more settlements too to the north to connect with Bunker Theta, as I will need it later anyway. After walking back I dissolved the General Atomic Settlement too, which meant walking around with 1800 weight all the way towards Greentop Nursery, 
but the distance was doable and it didn't run into further trouble. While expanding from Green Top Nursery towards Saga's Ironworks, I was casually building an outpost and I decided to make a boxcar on stilts for a change. This pretty much saved my life as I got assaulted by another legendary Alpha Deadclaw. Back in the time I was doing this, there was still a kill list and these objectives were actually on there. The kill list has been removed because it's really pointless and the challenge actually takes this long that you already complete all these objectives anyway without any effort. It actually took me four outposts to get from Green Top to Finch Farm. This settlement is very close to Sorgon Ironworks and in Finch Farm you can pick up the quest out of the fire, a requirement to get Finch Farm as a settlement. Abram Finch wants me to pick up his son Jake from the clutch of the forged in the Ironworks. And I don't have to even get him out of life, so it doesn't matter, the settlement will join me anyhow. Having three new settlements so close to each other is somewhat troublesome. Finch Farm, Green Top Nursery and County Crossing will drain the few fiber optics I need for the Sim settlement plots. So I can't grow them fast. Not to mention the slog I will visit later as well, after I've done the Saga's Ironworks and secured County Crossing. I also noticed that between every four settlements I build, I must do another resource run all the way back to Sanctuary and look for all my traders along the way. I run into several interesting enemies, a legendary glowing red stag and a lieutenant guts he actually stopped me. I could talk him out of killing me just to destroy it as soon as it moved away. And finally I can explore Saugus. At this point the forged are not overly strong. The earliest place I could drop my campsite was actually within the gate border so that means I can pretty much explore the whole area and enter without having to create an extra settlement. To deal with all these weapons and a heavy armor a quick tip is that you can actually scrap weapons and other dropped items within the campsite as well. They will end up in your bag so make sure to clean the bag before upgrading to a settlement. Never ever scrap a corpse within a campsite. For example if you scrap a slain mongrel or a mole rat, they'll come back to life as they respawn very much alive instead of ragdolled. I have not been able to scrap humanoids however in campsites. After slaying Slag, the leader, and in doing so complete an objective, I can bring Jake back to the farm. Mom a big owl solves all hardships between them and they live happy ever after. Finch Farm is not too bad as a settlement, it's quite an open area with some decent potential. You can even ladder your way up to the high road above if you want to be a little bit more creative. I feel like I have to move the cages somewhere more central. Sanctuary is constantly being attacked, forcing me to go back, but I don't want to make an investment yet. It's not all bad because I often have to go back anyway to get new materials. And Preston wants me to secure the castle, but it's quite a way south from Finch Farm, so I kindly ask him to hold off a little. If I would send him there already, I won't be able to hand in quests for all the settlements I secured north. I decided to build one more outpost from Taffington into the West Everest Estates. And you can't believe my luck, on a pallet I found two more boxes of ASIM sensors. Which means one of the biggest rarities, fiber optics, just got sorted for a short while by giving me 50 ASIM sensors. Definitely worth expanding towards there, or just get them with a campsite from Taffington. West Everest Estates loot was good, actually so good I decided to extend this power grid all the way to the Irish Pride Industry Shipyard and Poseidon Energy Turbine 18F in order to explore both. To get to the entrances with a campsite I need two settlements in West Everest Estates and one on the road between both places so not overly expensive. After exploring both places the loot was somewhat disappointing but I noticed I pretty much connected to a bridge to the south and I'm really close to a mechanical menace quest. I crossed the river and destroyed the robots. The friendly robot Ada asked me for my help well, with defeating the mechanist and I accept as it is an objective of the challenge. Afterwards I send her to defend Finch Farm which is surrounded by enemies. I'm sure they can use her just fine. At this point I used up all my settlements again so let's make sure I have at least 6 of them including my all time favorite Ferrani. Happiness is at 99 so if there ever was a time to let them go. Talking about Finch Farm, to save Country Crossing we need to clear out some raiders to the south and some super mutants seem to be in the way. So after clearing those I need 3 or 4 settlements to get to Reverb Beach Station. I can set up camp in Reed Marina first so the robots there can help me fend off some enemies. After the clearing the outside I decide to first pull the power grid all the way to Reverb Beach Station before entering. I am not sure what I will find on the island outskirts, but I don't think I will get the materials from there I need to build deeper in. Since I brought a lot of materials, I can dissolve the settlements at the Reed Marina and the Reverse Satellite Array right away. After dropping the contents of both settlements at Finch Farm, I clear out as much inventory room as possible to help clear the station out for a quest. Clearing the station was quite profitable. After leveling and being able to upgrade salvaging to maximum level, 
a lot of extra gears, copper and more important materials ended up in my inventory. Extending the settlements deeper on the eastern island will give me access to Boston Airport, North Haken Beach and an amazing racetrack which will be my next direction after securing Country Crossing. Handing in the quest in Country Crossing gave me a new permanent settlement so I spent some time building it up. Needed another settlement to connect to the main grid so I built that in between and used it to make a little heavy reinforced side entrance in Country Crossing and also build a crude fence around Country Crossing as it is a very open settlement. It seems like I run straight past the Lost Patrol quest. Having found all the holotags, now it's time to move all the way back north and investigate the bunker. We haven't met Paladin Dent yet, but you don't have to, to get Questline anyway. And good timing too, because I need to get another gear run, so I have to go up north anyway. It wouldn't be a bad idea to start working towards Diamond City, as a gear shipment seller should be there. During my routes I usually stop by most train posts I own and buy the junk items with gear and oil mainly. I decided to fully restock big time when I run into Trashcan Kala with over 4k on shipments too. It's amazing how successful Abernathy Farm adopted to the industrial production. Being in need of oil, I find 80 processed fuel, good for 160 oil in the workbench there. Do my charisma being increased, I can now house more settlers in each settlement, so checking them all and building some more residential plots seems to be a must. After upgrading several settlements, even using an elevator in Tempines Bluff and also an extra hide layer in Outpost Simonia, I continue all the way to the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. The settlement there was still active, and so I talked to Paladin Brandis, completed the quest, prepared the settlement and dissolved it, leaving him alone in a fortified environment. And I might return later to send him back to the Brotherhood, when they arrive. And I decided also to get to Boston Airport first, especially because I'd never been there before the Brotherhood arrived. There are some nice scavenging spots along the way. Easy City Downs racetracks and East Boston Preparatory School, as well as lots of houses and more. It will take me about five settlements to get there from the Reverge Beach Station, but that is more than fine. The school has a lot of raiders and that means a lot of weapons to scrap, ammo to loot, and a good amount of desk fans and other useful items. Boston Airport is swarmed by ghouls, and I can explore the whole thing without worry, because I cannot place my campsite anywhere, meaning there is only a region overlap zone. After clearing out the part of the ghouls, I return with a load in inventory. Before heading back, I use another settlement to cover both the bridge to North Haken Beach in the middle part of the racetracks. Near North Haken, I can scrap nearly everything, but also the racetracks calm me a good amount of loot. Unfortunately, North Haken doesn't make it easy to become allied, meaning all supplies I have been pushing down from settlement to settlement will be stuck there for a while, unless I want to walk over and come all the way to Country Crossing or Finch Farm. The quest for North Haken is to secure Krupp Manor, even further to the east. I need the settlements I have currently and all requirements are already built to dissolve them. Since it will take a while before I can get them back, I have no intention of leaving them out there for a while. So I have no choice but to dissolve them both and walk the long walk to Country Crossing. Now I passed by the slug but Wiseman refused to give me the quest, meaning I have to ignore this for now and wait for Preston to give it to me. And then we arrived at Dunwich Borders. First stations are raiders, tough ones. Mostly survivalists and even a veteran, but nothing you can't handle with a good sniper rifle bullet to the head. And then the scary parts are the ghouls. My combat rifle shreds through them, but the whole place is eerie and fast-paced. The Kangrenius ghouls, especially when legendary are scary though, they often almost get to me even before I get one hit on them. And after this thrill of battle, a short dive and near drowning experience, got some mini nukes and cramps stood, a melee weapon that's incredibly good. If you have the build for it. Which I don't. Besides that, a legendary Gatling gun and some other legendaries, as well as a ton of gears and materials and of course the stealth bobblehead. A good run indeed, well, almost forgot about station 5 and 6, which was a side route halfway station 4. So that means another greater amount of ghouls and more loot, and a lot of oil too, so that's absolutely fine. Going deeper into the island will indeed be interesting, two more settlements, but one I cannot go unless I bring the mats for a fusion reactor, being Far Harbor, through Coastal Cottage. One settlement I placed to get to Dunwich Borders passed really close by a gunner base next to Sorgus Ironworks, and they have been giving me some problems when I was working on Finch Farm as well. I thought it to be a good idea to make it a bit of a fortified base near them with some heavy guns to help me clear it out. 
I might not use companions, but I certainly use settlements to help me clear enemies out. In hindsight, I turned out to be in vain as only three guys were defending the base in the bottom. Afterwards, I did not want to risk Captain Bridget using her nukes on me, so I took her out from the roof of Sorgus, clearing Hub City, auto wreckers, and completing a kill objective. I will leave this area for now. I gained some levels, been maxing out gun nut and armor, so time to upgrade my gear to polymer. Ultralight seems to give you a bonus in less weight of each individual gear piece, but for arm pieces that's not even too weight. While deep pockets it gives you a chest 20, and for other gear pieces at least another 40 combined, that bonus is much more useful. Ultralight would also give you another AP bonus, but is that actually worth the extra 60 inventory space? To compromise I only give the chest piece the deep pockets for now, and with the others heavy army I found on Captain Bridget I upgrade the guard near the cages as much as possible. After doing another round, it's really time to expand a little south. If I want to stop having to do all these rounds, I should get to Diamond City. But something that's actually maybe two settlements away is Cambridge. In Cambridge you will find Paladin Dan's and a ton of ghouls. But progressing there won't be easy. So we also have to secure a route to Arcade System before we can continue questing for the Paladin. When I finally expanded from Quit Outpost further south, I actually only needed one settlement to stand at the entrance of College Square, also containing a metro dungeon. Since I heard the gunfire from the Paladin and his friends, I had no choice but to use the campsite to get to it. The campsite border ended very close to the entrance of the police station, and the lenient rule that you have some space during combat came into play. As you initiate the combat from within your borders and the people you need to rescue fall slightly outside of range but within the shooting range so dispose of the ghouls and talk to the paladin and move back out. Of course I cannot enter the police station and it's not within the range of the campsite. I decided to remove the hastily placed campsite and place it a bit more down the road. This way I can use my next workshop to directly access and contain the police station. After upgrading, cleaning up a little and scraping a lot, I pulled the power grid through the college square. I am thinking of bringing some settlers down to protect the police station and show Paladin Dance that my people are better armored than him. Grey Garden and Arcade systems are both to the east. Even worse, Grey Garden is dead on the route to Arcade. Well worse, just for Dance as he has to wait a bit longer. I slowly work my way to the west and arrive at Grey Garden with just two settlements. They pretty much always give me the same quest, clean the water at Western Water Treatment Plant. Fair enough, but Grey Garden lies just too close to the south, meaning I can't take the route south of Grey Garden past the water side, because I cannot place a campsite there. I have to take the route on the south side of the river, past the Beantown Brewery. That also means we make way to Overland Station and then cross the dam to go back up from there. Considering the main quest will send us there sooner than later, or at least after I visit the Diamond City, it's not a problem to have a route halfway, which would technically be true, but Dogmeat will take the route south of Diamond City, so I can't just take that shortcut. Or I would be able if I would be able to secure a way all the way to Fort Hagen, as the leniency perk Walk With Me states you can walk outside your own territory with a quest giver that forces you to follow, for example Dogmeat to Fort Hagen, However, you must have a settlement or way station at both the begin and the end point of that route. Regardless, my first stop is Beantown Brewery, and I'm aware I skipped College Square Metro Instance. I will do that later. Beantown Brewery is under control by raiders, somewhat connected to the raiders in Koviga and other places. Tower Tom is the raider boss, which wasn't a hard target and allowed me to use my shotgun for a change. Other than that, two roaches and a few raided psychos, very weak for my current level. The fun part is the empty bottles everywhere. I set up camp around the back of the brewery and went in for a few times with pockets full of bottles. Eventually I ended up with 122 purified water and around 25 bottles of different types of beer. Well, that's good for sales. And just like with Grey Garden, it's almost impossible to get past Oberland without owning it. Luckily they tell me to clear out some mutants back in Cambridge. I probably can get there with just my camp. But to connect Boontown Brewery with Oberland, I had to put the settlement in between all the way near the water side, which in turn triggered me to simply cross the water there and then use the highest power cables I could find to connect the grid over the water. It worked out flawlessly and suddenly I found myself at the Western Water Treatment Plant. 
I instantly dropped a little camp and turrets and lured the super mutants to the turrets, then proceeded to snipe the rest away. Clearing the western water treatment plant itself was not hard at all. A few Maya lurks and some water hurts, which I initially disabled, but then activated again just so I could get them and get the loot from it. After restarting the pump, I moved back to the Great Garden and befriended the settlement. I do not intend to put beds and settlers there for now, since I don't have any ASIM sensors left and crafting them is expensive. Some traders have the sensors from time to time, but only a few at a time. Next stop is Fraternal Post 115. I can reach it easily with a single camp from Cambridge Police Station. Going down from there is the shortest route to Diamond City after all. But before I build my way down, I need to resolve a lot of settlements. As I only have one workshop left, I can place. I best do one more massive round after I got Oberlin Station and then head south. There was only one mob in Fraternal Post despite it being the quest mob. Something had to be up, Hey, voila, when I went outside a posse was waiting for me. After disposing of the enemy posse I went to Opelon just to find out I was unable to connect the power grid. Meaning I need another settlement. Placing a settlement on the other side actually proved highly beneficial as I could refill my depleted wood supplies with a massive forest I could scrap. Again normally you can't scrap much outside the real settlements, especially not without the scrapping mod or with an older version of the scrapping mod but if they are close enough to the real settlement you might get lucky and hit a jackpot. Another very interesting encounter I unlocked this way was an alien hiding you know, in a cave. Uh, I always thought the cave was somewhat deeper in with aliens crash tracks leading to the cave entrance but I must explore further let's just keep the alien blaster for now. The next task is to dissolve as much as I can. By doing so I realized one of the settlements is really close to Bunker Hill so of course I got sidetracked again and re-established one of the dissolved settlements to branch out to Bunker Hill, which only requires one new settlement. Coming near Bunker Hill allows me to scrap a lot, even the borders houses, which I don't want, as I know this will just look buggy and I don't like that. I'll scrap the settlements for now because it will be a long time before I can claim Bunker Hill, seeing I need to get the quest from the institute first. For now I can freely roam around in Bunker Hill, giving me a proper settlement for trading and healing. Since I'm close by, now it's the time to both scrap the cluster of settlements to the east and secure all four settlements there, beginning with the most northern one, Coastal Cottage. It's not at all busy to settle my way towards the cottage, but surrounding the cottage I find very powerful foes, like an Alpha Deathclaw, a Glowing Deathclaw and a Myrlan Queen. Luckily one settled the settlements fight for me. Several gunners are hoarded up nearby as well, as I complete the initial settlement in Coastal Don't Cottage. Move, I test my domination perk which Easy works now. a bit awkward Hands on its up. first level as the gunners become docile since I don't trust them and don't want to get shot in the back. The best way is to just to take them out anyway. Can we talk about how awesome the macro fish packing plant is? When you enter the area you see dead raiders left and right, even inside and on the roof many raiders slain, no signs of any enemy. Inside the plant you will find the entire floor to be empty and one massive elevator going down. Then sins, everywhere, a lot, strong ones too, three legendaries, assaulters, many seekers and ultimately one leader. I went back halfway to sleep and rest, it was a trap, there were four waiting for me at the top of the elevator. Luckily I could quickly barricade myself in and outside, still away from my bed, I kind of expected the trap to continue and I was right. So I quickly took cover and fell back to my outpost. From there I cleared the area, slept and went back in to challenge the synth leader with the help of a protecting guardian. Quite a challenge indeed. I level 251 and I have 4 science, which would mean I can go to Far Harbor, since I can now place a fusion reactor. I need to go even further north to find the starting point. Nagano residence is far, 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 far north. From Coastal Cottage it cost me 6 outposts to get there, which all need to be upgraded and connected. It took me half a day to get from Dunwich Borders all the way to Nakano Residence. As soon as I bring the mats for the fusion reactor, I will be allowed to go to Far Harbor, which is incredibly exciting for me, because I love that expansion. I took the quest from Nakano parents to find their daughter after I tried to expand the direction of the lighthouse, but finally I have enough gears and oil but start lacking basic materials like wood, concrete and steel again. On my way for another resource run, I pass by the stalker again. This time Jones asked me for help and Weissman finally hands in the quest to obtain the slog. I'm not sure if it is because I'm level 50 plus or that Preston didn't have an open quest, well except for the retaking the castle, 
but either way I'm glad because I wanted their base badly. A simple quest which only requires me to place my campsite north of Greentop Nursery and take out the super mutants and break hard banks. After that I set up a starting base at the slog. I decided not to go all the way to Sanctuary this time, but take the default shops in Covenant, Starlight Drive-In and Drumlin Diner. In all places I buy all concrete, wood and steel shipments to haul a ton of stuff northeast. I must say I'm having too much fun upgrading the slog to a luxurious and safe place to live, and after rebuilding and returning to Coastal Cottage I continue making my way towards the lighthouse. First building I run into is the Museum of Witchcraft. Inside I find an albino deathclaw. Now in order to make my life easy I place a workshop inside. There is a rule that you don't need a workshop inside any instance, but it's certainly not forbidden. If you can connect the main grid to the instant building, you can continue using the workshop inside and dissolve it once the requirements are met. Regardless, completing and dissolving it costs me much more than I get out of it. The next stop is the lighthouse, maybe in the most eastern outpost available. On my route there I walked past Salem, a little decrepit town with someone yelling a lot of bad words to a lot of crabs. A small quest chain where you have to kill glowing mire lurks and activate turrets to get a sniper rifle. I already had one but with 50% bonus versus mire works and bugs. And this one is a lot louder though and slightly lighter, a gun called Reba. Moving on further, I have my first encounter with the Children of Atom. They wear no armor, but are tough as nails. I struggle my way through their camp just to notice that they took hold of Kingsport Lighthouse. After taking those out and taking a lot of radiation damage in the process, I burn through all my x-rays and red away supplies. I see a glowing one sitting within the lighthouse chamber of the lighthouse. Killing that gave me access to the workshop. After setting up camp, I am out of oil and gear, so I need to go back again. I want to visit Far Harbor badly, but I am not allowed to go there due to a small but mandatory requirement. The rules state the following, you cannot enter Far Harbor, Nuka World or Spectacle Island until Sanctuary has a generator fusion, and you must bring all materials to build one in the new areas before you can go there. So I need mats for two fusion generators, which I have easily, but I need to travel to Sanctuary to build one. Since I'm out of some supplies, I need to go anyway. This far east is a lot harder suddenly, and slower progression as a result. But I still need Croup Manor to get North Haken Beach, so not done there quite. I decided to make a shortcut from Coastal Cottage to the Slog, passing by Old Parsons Insane Asylum. Should make it easier to get to that corner later, and once I'm at Sanctuary I finally built a fusion generator and I noticed one of my advanced industrial plots became a news building. Generating a local paper as well as happiness, so that was a nice surprise. After doing another round of cannon cages I bring a set of heavy combat armor to make a strong guard at the lighthouse. Walking up and forth is time consuming but it does enable to fully restock. Abernathy farm for oil and for example Red Rocket Truck Stop had over 4k caps saved up for me. With a lot of new gears, oil and more I move back to the lighthouse, but before I get there there's a little place near Salem I skipped last time. This was due me not having enough ammo to clear it out. Sandy Cove's convalescent home used to be a delightful home for the elderly to spend their last days. There's tons of medical loot and drugs in there, but there's a catch. Halfway it gets invaded by synths, strong synths. With my new radium gun I managed to take them out and even one of the robot caretakers survived. A little south of the lighthouse is a miscellaneous quest objective I pick up when I found a settler dying on some cans of meat. Lukowski has been up to no good, packing god knows what in his cans. He tricked me into entering his basement and after taking out a number of ghouls, which became easier and easier to kill, I resurfaced to find him being all hostile on me. Clearly he underestimated my power as I took him out with a single shot. In his office I find the barter bobblehead. Regardless I found a massive upgrade for my heavy combat armor chest, namely an assault mariner armor with a 10 damage percent reflect, so that was a great success. Since I already upgraded my arms to trapper gear, which looks rather cool, I slowly become a walking tank. The bridge to Croup Manor has some big robots, but overall rather easy as I keep putting two heavy turrets to the outer edge of my deeper settlement. They do the heavy lifting for me in the Commonwealth, me and my settlements rule supreme, unlike in instance areas. 
Krupp Manor itself is an old villa with several stories. In the cellar, we find the Krupp dynasty being a bunch of withered ferals and one dead ghoul who's supposedly been trying for hundreds of years to teach his family to be sophisticated again. Since the whole building has the same dimension as the warehouse buildings, I can scrap the broken floors and walls and replace them with more durable solutions. Next up is Libertalia, the massive raider infested floating stronghold between North Haken Beach and Krupp Manor. I thought if I could pull a wire through there, I have a full circle and I can go around easily. But Libertalia is not as easy to navigate as I hoped. Putting down telephone poles on most places seem near impossible and sometimes I must resort to the longer poles to proceed. Besides a lot of the ships can be scrapped which causes more chaos, but so can a lot of crates and objects meaning a nice raw material income. The raiders itself are easy, just sniping practice basically. Their leader wire and some of the raiders used to run with the Minutemen. It seems only fitting that the Minutemen general takes them out. Considering the piles of traitor corpses I find in Libertalia, they strayed far from their ways. Way too far for redemption. North Haken Beach is finally mine. I have to pull some strings, literally, to get there and need to dissolve some settlements as well. I'm running out of gears again, but I might make it from all the weapons I found to at least cover the last of this entire area. There's an annoying kit which I can't move around, preventing me from creating a wholesome platform. So I hope it moves eventually. I'll leave a stair for him to get out for now. After a quick detour because of the lighthouse was under attack, it's time to head back to restock. Arriving at Starlight Drive-In, I find my fifth Gidea Buttercup which I placed there for absolutely no reason. I always drink a beer and eat something from Ron Staples as well, but even with my money influx, this bar does not seem to upgrade at all. After visiting all my trading hubs, I head out. With the procuration of Gary Garden, our kit system is close by. It costs me three workshops to get there, but I have a base ready and can pick up Paladin's Dance now. I can freely use the entrance and exits as I covered both with actually the same way station. I can just walk with him to Arcade Systems even if it falls outside my territory, which it actually doesn't. I will most likely not leave the overlap region at any point. Arcade Systems is very easy at this level, the synths don't scale well here. I even help Dance clear out the engine room so we can both see the fireworks, rather than burn him and the synths to a crisp. After I pick up the follow quests and hand in the quest to find the old brother of Steel Reckon team, I move further south to make my way to Diamond City. First two instances I run into is the Sid Rotunda and one settlement to the West Cambridge Polarman Labs. Around Sid, the floor is a bit bugged. It's like something is under the floor there. Regardless, I have a hard time placing telephone poles there and can scrap nearly everything which is quite unique so far away from an actual outpost. Especially Cambridge Polymer Labs is a gold mine on telephones, typewriters and scrappable valuables. The power armor chest is nice, but I rarely use my power armor as it feels unnatural and it makes too much noise for my taste. I finally crossed the bridge and connected to Hangman's Alley, very close to Diamond City now. And after spending too much time building up Hangman's Alley, I work my way up to Diamond City and talk to Piper and the Major. Once inside I head up to the Major's office and buy a house for 2000 caps. After witnessing Paul Pembroke being a total failure to his wife, I help him get even with Henry Cook. Henry Cook in turn tells us about his stash to make up for it. Luckily the whole endeavor takes place within my overlap region so I can tag along and take out the dog's game. I was being nice and decided to split 50-50 with Paul, but he just took everything and walked off leaving me with empty crates. This was stupid, so I shot him without a second thought. Somehow this made Henry hostile as well, and after I failed to persuade him, because I've, I kinda liked him, I had no choice but to take him down as well. Now with a total of 60 buff out jet and 2 other stimulants, I had 240 items for sale and totally worth nearly 10,000 caps. What a load! I ran into Cricket, so I bought every weapon she had, for scrapping of course, and paid with some of the camps. That will bring in enough gear for some settlements. And since I bought a home, I have a mandatory settlement called Home Plate. Here you can build a bunch of furniture and workstations and just make a pretty place for yourself. It's mandatory because the challenge requires you to get all workshops, but since it's within an instant settlement, you don't need to connect power. I spent some time helping Travis to get his confidence back, a mandatory quest, so it was quite nice to just focus on questing. And Beantown Brewery was already cleared, so that made it a lot easier. Another mandatory quest is Hole in the Wall. 
Vault 81 is very nearby, so I use two workshops to get there. One of the workshops gets some extra defense as that place is a hot zone for fights. In Vault 81 first donate blood to Dr. Forsythe and then either complete here kitty kitty or wait a bit and then you'll see panic broke out in the vault. But first I go a full round of settlements because many of them are ready to get attacked, especially Sanctuary. I have become more self-sufficient and don't need to run trading routes that much to progress, so I want to leave all of them uh, stronger defense and disable the cages too. I have no more need for the heavy combat armor at this point as I run into plenty of mobs with somewhat similar gear. Of course the tons and tons of oil produced by Abernathy might be a place I return to regularly. Vault 81 had three items of great interest though. Overseer arm guards, left and right, and Overseer's Guardian, a double shot sniper rifle. So we will upgrade those at Sanctuary 2. And I also know that Gran in Vault 81 needs fertilizer, so I'll bring a few hundred of those too. After upgrading the defenses in Starlight Drive-In, by placing a rocket launcher on the roof, I noticed finally a lot of buildings started to upgrade again. All this time it was the lack of proper defense holding them back. Back in Sanctuary I got a bit carried away, I removed the cages from the old place and placed some red stack cages back and according to the rules I need one Yeokai cage, one red stack, five gunners and two raiders. So I made a new defense concrete stronghold in the back, added missile turrets and a lot of defense and placed the gunner cages in the stronghold. Now I plan to enhance this later but I run out of concrete for the time being. I don't have the red stack meat to make a Yaogai cage now but this will come soon as soon as the red stack cages start spawning them. And then I can let the gunners fight the other guys, which will be fun so I made accommodations to be able to release them one by one. Back in 81 I brought the kitty and hole in the wall starts as soon as I find Austin in the med bay. A hidden portion of the vault opens up and I find myself fighting through a horde of mole rats. And I also find Curry, a scientist robot and a medicine bobblehead. Curry hands me the cure which I give to Dr. Forsythe. After completing hole in the wall I send Curry to Grey Garden. Too bad I contracted mole rat disease too, I was quite careful but got infected after all. I might need a perk in endurance to compensate a little. After some exploring around Diamond City I get a lot of reports of buildings upgrading in cities I strengthened the defenses from. But also still some eastern settlements are still in need of aid. I decided to travel there once more to accommodate at least space for 22 people and there is the max of my charisma as well. I also focus on heightening the defenses severely. After upgrading Coastal Cottage and Kingsport Lighthouse, I'm starting to run out of several resources like circuitry. A tip if you're desperate for fiber optics, gears and circuitry, if you have money like 10k or more, you have a max out weapon vendor and start buying weapons. The longer the weapon name, the more good stuff can be scrapped from it. Now when passing by Abernathy, all advanced industrial plots went to a higher level and they look pretty awesome. Advanced materials like nuclear material, ballistic fiber and tons of junk, but it also means my oil might be depleted soon there. Luckily I built a backup in Finch Farm. With all these advancements it's really time to get a nuclear reactor in Abenati. Also defense was way too low again, but I found out that a small Martian plot actually gives 25 defense when upgraded properly. And that's much cheaper than all the turrets I've been burning. Per experiment I put down 4 extra martial plots in Abernathy, where the stats currently going they will upgrade fast and provide a massive boost to defense. 4 fiber optics for 100 defense, good trade in my book. Red Rocker Truck Stop is at 99 happiness, which is amazing and some residents are still living in bed so I have no choice but to squeeze in some more residential plots. Which is quite a challenge as it is but a small area. Back at Sanctuary I release the red stacks to get some meat for the Yao Gai cage and do a test run with the gunner cages. The gunners are getting higher like majors, brigadiers and captains and the lower gunner ranks are slowly disappearing. Being at 95% happiness I feel confident to add two advanced industrial plots to Sanctuary, random so they can decide what it becomes for themselves. Especially low industrial plots get minus 10 happiness due noise, but if a lumberyard changes to a newspaper office you actually gain happiness. I'm thinking about getting Sunshine Tidings co-op soon, but not sure how to proceed yet. I think I will use my base at Arkyet to build further to the west while going to Nuka World and then picking it up. I can't progress much there at the moment since I have 5 bases still active around Diamond City which needs to be dissolved first. And besides that, Ten Pines Bluff and Outpost Simonia need some upgrades too, but I can't spare the resources right now for those two. That doesn't count for Grey Garden however, both Ten Pines and Zamonia have nearly max settlers, but I never placed a beacon in Grey Garden. 
I just sent Dogmeat, Curry and Ada there, and the six robots that live in Great Garden won't need any beds, so that's a good thing. The expansion room for Great Garden is not ideal, but doable if you place some concrete floors first. Knowing what I know now, the robot companions can occupy martial plots to boost the defense, so I built some of those at least right away. I want to work towards saving Nick Valentine. I spent some time doing the remainder of the side quest in Diamond City and expand a little around it. If I save Nick, I can start progressing further south to continue the main quest, but I prefer to have the entire city covered. I decide to build workshops around the city to the south, this way I avoid cramped city streets with potential problems. I also build up Hangman's Alley to support around 20 settlers. Fiber optics is still a massive problem and I can only get to sometimes from the vault, so I can't progress some settlements much faster. As I move slowly towards the east of Boston I quickly run into some instances. Layton Towers is a multi-stored raider infestant apartment building and not there too much loot there but it's always satisfying to take out some raiders. A bit further down the road I noticed some super mutants on top of the building called Wilson Tomatoys Corporate HQ. This place was loaded, many many Gidea buttercups and parts for them and also a lot of ammo and junk. I need three holes to clear the place out. I progress deeper into the heart of Boston and I have several options now. Trinity Tower and Trinity Plaza will be places I want to go soon but first I want to discover the Freedom Trail. For that I need to progress back north a bit. I place a little way station near Swans Point and use turrets to take him out quickly. After that I drop another workshop in the heart of Boston Commons near the pond. This way I cover the entire plaza. After I clear out some small bandit camps and a few super mutants I also get to enter Hubrick's Comics. This place is infested with ghouls and has a studio on the top floor. I find a lot of hell yes by picking up props, a medieval axe, which is not really my style but the vats look cool in it and some gear. Sanctuary has been attacked several times now. They have 130 defense and I see their happiness is still at 96% so I can't be bothered right now to go back. I also want to wrap up all the settlements I used to get to the current place and that means over encumbered walking for some times. If I can drop everything in Hangman's Alley, I have a great load of new resources. And next up I actually go to Trinity Tower and a super mutant called Fist has Rex and Strong captured on top of the tower. Good thing about super mutants is they drop a lot of advanced pipe rifles which means a lot of copper and good resources. And also on the very top I find the melee bobblehead. Afterwards I rush straight towards saving Nick Valentine who is cooked up in Parkway Station. In this instance which merges into a vault, namely Vault 114, there will be just another bobblehead being the speech bobblehead. Skinny Malone seems nice enough to let live and we get 10 seconds to run away. So let's just keep him and give him the illusion he is in control of the situation. And when I return to Valentine we talk about Kellogg and check out his former house in Diamond City. He advises to take dog meat and follow the dog to find Kellogg, however this instantly becomes a problem. I can't just follow dog meat, I need to draw a power grid along that route which is costly but beneficial, because in short time you cover a massive amount of land to the west. As I place workshops and slowly move to the west I pass by Vault 81 really closely. I already have a different route to Vault 81 so I can connect both routes together which gives me a shortcut for the future. And same counts for Oberlin Station. A small detour will connect this place also giving me more room to walk. As I progress to the vest I try to follow Dogmeat but stop doing so when he tries to walk through a forest. Seeing the road outlines on the map I decided to create a power grid south of the forest and make a detour to Poseidon Reservoir. Afterwards I can follow the road to the north to Fort Hagen and Greater Mass Blood Clinic. In the Poseidon Reservoir I need to grab a flux sensor for the Quarter Mastery quest. It's just a side quest, but it does give me an excuse to visit Paladin Dance and his lackeys again. Now Greater Mass Blood Clinic itself is pretty infested, but easy enough to clear for a nice supply of blood packs. A bit further up the road is Fort Hagen. I plan to build my way over the dam back to Oberlin Station to have another route from there as well. Also because on the side of the river we have a relay tower 1TL-109, a mandatory objective. With my power grid stretching to Fort Hagen I clear out the many sins there and confront Kellogg. In a way I, I wish I could keep him alive, but it's just no option. 
After disposing of Kellogg and his robotic lackeys, I leave Fort Hagen through the roof exit and see the Pritvin passing by. I want to go there as soon as possible. Since I already cleared Boston Airport, I can freely go there too. But first I build my power grid all the way back to the east, across the dam and pick up the relay tower 1DL-109. Then I move back to Cambridge Police Station and talk to Paladin Downs and I hand in the flux center. From there I take a vertebrate to the Pritwin. Once there I meet the crew and I'm quite happy I can talk to Quinlan and start holding technical documents. Elder Maxon has tons to say and everyone seems to trust me to the fullest. At this point I'll play along, maybe indefinitely, but Proctor Teakin is already pissing me off. Forcing me to commandeer resources from one of my own settlements, namely County Crossing. Elder Maxon however sends me to Fort Strong which I can take if my vertebrate lands safely, which it does. Which means it becomes a bonus campsite allowing me to quest around it. The vertebrate gets destroyed eventually, which is out of my control, so I quickly clear Fort Strong and rush to North Hagen Beach. Being in this corner of the map is actually a good thing, as I can check all settlements in this area and make sure they have everything they need maxed out completely. Next on my to-do list is meet the railroad. Continue the main quest by visiting Nick Valentine and securing the castle, in that order. Which would potentially be a great roadmap, but since I was Checking out all settlements, when I found myself in Coastal Cottage, I realized I had more than enough materials to actually go to Far Harbor. And the thought of a change of scenery actually makes for a good plan. When arriving at Far Harbor, you don't have to rush and build a fusion generator. You can help out the residents with the attack first. And first of all, because you can count the boat you came with as a bonus campsite and can freely do quests around it. And secondly, because Far Harbor is a town controlled by faction, thus allows you to move freely. However, after I complete the emergency quest, I dropped the campsite. And I upgraded it to a workshop right away and dropped the fusion generator in the heart of Far Harbor. After I get my first settlements on the island map, I will send some settlers there as well. And this will not be easy. Far Harbor Island has four settlements total, and all require prequests to be complete. Now, Arcadia itself is about four workshop areas to the southwest, and at least two quests will be three or four workshops directly to the west. I decided to follow the road to the west first and do some side quests. At first, I didn't see the conquest settlement on the map, but after relogging, they showed up fine. It seems that when you change maps, it has a problem catching up unless you load that map initially. Cliff's Edge Hotel is a hotel on top of a vault that is infested by ghouls. The Scrap Everything mod actually allowed me to scrap a shortcut for once, which was fun and also allowed cleaning up the hotel a bit. After clearing at least 20 ghouls, which were really high level already, charred, bloated legendaries, I finally made it to the elevator. Vault 118. I suddenly became a detective in a hotel filled with robot brains and stuck in there in a devious vault plot to experiment with ultra-rich and common people. Well, not the robot brain part, that's why things went sideways for the vault plan, because that was their own choice, a plan to live forever. And I went on a date with a robot named Gilda, which was yeah, confusing, and I spent some time digging through the stuff and mines trying to figure out who the killer was. Juliana, Keith or Santiago? I wasn't ready to convict Keith yet, and I didn't specifically point at him when I asked him all the clues pointed towards him. Regardless, he assaulted me, and I let the guards actually do the sentencing without attacking him myself. Cassie Dawson gave me the quest Blood Tide, and of all places, Far Harbor is the place to do some side quests in order to gain the trust of the citizens. This will eventually give the quest needed to unlock several settlements. In the National Park campground, a bit to the south of Klitsch hotel, I clear out some ghouls while also progressing the power grid towards Arcadia. Before I can go with old Longfellow, I need to have a route secured to Arcadia. Securing the route to Arcadia is quite costly, it's quite a long road, but every workshop area has no return value. A few ghouls along the way, but nothing to scrap and no instances to plunder. From Far Harbor I need about 8 workshops to get to Arcadia. The area around Arcadia however looks quite juicy, unfortunately I first need to secure some resources before I can dissolve the settlements. So time to go back to the mainland for a bit and hopefully dissolve some settlements there as well, as I don't have to get creative with the four workshops I have to progress in Far Harbor. Back on the mainland I noticed Coastal Cottage is making fiber optics in one of its advanced industrial plots and plenty of it. This might explain the increase in fiber optics of late. I tried to visit a lot of settlements that really need the last push. I moved from Coastal Cottage, who got some farms to the Slog, who needed some extra houses, Marshall and industrial plots, and then to Greentop Nursery and slowly moved to Grey Garden where I upgrade everything in the greenhouse. 
and then afterwards make my way back to Abenati for oil and then sanctuary. I managed to recruit Tina from Vault 81 by getting her brother off the yet, which I sent to Sanctuary and to work in a new advanced industrial plot. The next stop is shopping for copper shipments and placing some advanced industrial plots in Starlight Drive-In. After that I moved to Ark yet because there is one settlement still missing, Sunshine, Tidings, Co-op. I plan to pull the power grid all the way north to make a second grid in the west connecting from Oberland to Grey Garden to Sunshine Tidings Co-op and then back to Abernathy. Which might be costly but it will help me in the future getting to Nuka World 2. And along the way is the Federal Ration stockpile, where I need to be anyway to kill Red to Red. When near Federal Ration stockpile, my settler from North Hagen Beach found my very first discovery, Advanced Tools which should give me a boost to level 4 farms. After taking out Red to Red, it was only 2 workshops to get to Sunshine Tidings Co-op and it's a large square area and I want to scrap everything except the main building in the middle and make it an amazing natural town. After setting up Sunshine Tidings Co-op to be able to house 22 settlers, I went back to the Federation stockpile, dissolved as many settlements as I could and started building towards Nuka World. I have no intention of going there yet, but I will make sure the route is done since I'm here anyway. Federation stockpile has another exit that ends in the Lonely Chapel and make sure to set up a way station in there as well. While slowly making my way towards the Nuka World entrance, I found a very large spot between Nuka World and Lonely Chapel where I could randomly scrap all trees and objects. Remember, I was still in the old version of the scrapping mod. The extra 600 wood was a bonus. The Nuka World Transit Center is loaded with gunners, including Gunner Commander Kaler. Time to bring out the trusty sniper rifle to take him out. I can actually scrap a remarkable amount of resources from the Transit Center, so I place my workshop smack in the middle and access every corner. Tempting as it may be to enter, I don't have the resources for a fusion generator as I literally need one nuclear material actually. Regardless, I want to go back to Far Harbor first anyway. I will keep the workshop active as there are way too many resources in there to drag all the way to Sunshine Tidings Co-op. Plus I need those later to get started in Nuka World. Back in Sunshine Tidings Co-op, I built my way back north. I need to workshop to get over the dam and then one to finally connect to the three road point I mentioned all the way in chapter 2 when building towards Abernathy near Gorski Cabin. After placing way stations, connecting the grid, dissolving the three workshops, I finally have a second route south. And after grabbing some oil in Abernathy and make a pit stop in Sanctuary, I move to Tempines Bluff in the east. Both Tempines Bluff and Simonia Outpost need some help, as they have been upgrading their need for power, defense and water rows as well. After some much needed upgrades, I move to Green Top Nursery, make some small adjustments and then to Finch Farm. Finch Farm has been remarkably happy, even though food and water supplies were incredibly low. Luckily, nothing I can't remedy. Seeing in what recreational plots evolve, where I see a simple table with a 44 pistol and one bullet, I wonder if settlers aren't simply renewed all the time to keep the happiness up, but who am I to judge what makes people happy? Last and new stop is Boston Airport. Initially I thought I had to wait for a certain quest to complete, but I can pretty much take the outpost as soon as the Pritman lands and you become knighted. Bad thing is you can't place a recruitment beacon, but no worries. I sent several settlers from North Hagen Beach, Finch Farm and Country Crossing to Boston Airport and set up a base. Even though it's a clean, beautiful spot, it certainly is cramped, so I'm unsure if it can hold that many settlers. You can't plant food there, but sim settlements will override that with agriculture plots. So overall, no need to not get a good living place going. I also handed in a few quests at the Pritwin, including the one where I had to clear at Fort Strong, and Elder Maxon handed me some vertebrate signal grenades, which will help me tremendously travel faster, or maybe help a settlement before they get attacked for once. Using the vertebrate signal grenade, I fly back to the Nakano residence. I talk to old Longfellow and walk with him to Arcadia. Since I already cleared the road and built the power grid, it was a safe and boring journey. Near Arcadia we did run into a preacher for the children of Atom and I played along to make sure my access to the base will be easy in the future. Into Arcadia I spent some time talking to everyone, including Dima, and after I talked to Kazumi, I hide in a wooden crate and listen to the plans Dima and his colleagues have. They seem to be missing some databanks stored in the submarine owned by the children of Atom, and I offer to infiltrate and off I go further to the west. I build a secure bridge over the water west of Arcadia as a shortcut and even drop a missile launcher just to see some fireworks. 
As I progress further south, I run into several trapper counters in Old Point House and Southwest Harbor. I also have trouble placing lights here, and the game seems to be crashing when placing lights near all the light sources. Must make sure to save before placing lights. The island's fog must be perfectly tuned to not accept Commonwealth lighting. A bit south of Southwest Harbor, I find two of the missing tapes Faraday was asking about. When handing them back in, he complains about there should be three, but it remarks me anyway. And I decide to go back to Far Harbor as I am low on supplies and progress two workshop to the southeast of Far Harbor to be able to complete both the missing synth quest and repair the four condensers. After that, I could claim Longfellow's cabin and finally had my first real settlement on the island. I spent a good two hours setting up the base, I even found crystal in the iron mine, so now I can upgrade it to get crystals. My most needed material as of late. Suddenly a settler comes running towards me. The four condensers are down and an attack is inbound. The monsters I saw coming I never saw before, and it was damn I got my defenses up when they did. Gulpa devourers, a bunch of glowing wolves, irradiated Yao Gai and even a mighty fog roller descended upon the island. For the first time in a long time my weapon seems weak and I need to rely on my base defenses. I flew back to Hangman's Alley, mainly to hand in some quests in Diamond City. I have so many quests in the castle corner now, I am seriously doubting if I should expand the good neighbor and then the castle or continue on Far Harbor. I have an outpost still standing in the middle of Boston, near the combat zone. I think with one or two outposts I can at least follow the freedom trail and good neighbor, which I might as well do. Unlocking the brotherhood already gave me such an advantage, being able to fly across the map, unlocking more factions might be equally beneficial. As I clear my way through Boston Commons I pick up some pieces of the freedom trail. And then eventually meet the leader of the railroad, Destimon. I decided to enter Massachusetts State House, I thought it be a quick clear, few raiders in and out, boy I was wrong. I fought tons of Meyer Lurks, even a Meyer Lurk Queen and strong raiders. Just needed one settlement to get to Good Neighbor, traded a bit, picked up some small quests, dated Magnolia because best music and actually the playlist she's singing was my Spotify most played album in 2020, 33 times. I had to kill Maraski too, the owner of the Rexton Hotel in Good Neighbor. In chapter 2 we had to dispose of Nelson What's Latimer up, and his father wasn't happy. Maraski pinned it on me, which makes sense because I did, but I repinned it on Maraski. So now I had to avenge the son I killed by killing someone else. You could go in blazing and that would pretty much send all good neighbors after you, or just wait until the guy goes to bed. A somewhat silent melee weapon will do the job for you. Just before that I cleared out three warehouses as well to get on Hancock's good side. Hancock being the sadistic major of Good Neighbor. After that it's really time to meet Nick in the memory then, where we will try to pick Kellogg's brain about something from his past. I actually love this part, looking through his brain, seeing his life. We should have gotten the option to get him as a companion. Next stop is finding Virgil in the glowing sea, now let's something else entirely. That will be very hard to reach for me in a short time and I must put that on hold for now. I spent many hours in Boston, so much buildings to clear, every workshop I place has multiple instances. I clear, scrap and sell a lot in Good Neighbor and repeat while slowly covering most of Boston and working my way towards the castle. I meet Jack Cabot and pick up a quest for him. I had this crazy idea to connect Boston Airport with Boston Commons and actually make a bridge, which won't be too hard as some places connect really closely. Well that worked. There was a submarine nearby, so I helped Captain Zhao to get it back up and running and nothing like helping a communist to get back home. After that I complete trouble brewing by very slowly helping drinking buddy to get to Hotel Rexford in Good Neighbor. After taking out Marowski earlier, it's the least I can do to replenish the staff. I spent two full nights getting to the castle and building the castle up. Initially there was a strange clipping issue inside where it feels like the concrete floor isn't really a floor, but I can drop stilted wooden floors on the floor below to at least fake a floor. After I upgraded my scrapping mod, this issue disappeared. I dropped plenty of infrastructure down before heading to my way station near Drumlin Diner. From there I want to attempt to build down a little to be able to get to Deacon from the railroad. Deacon sent me to my outpost in Lexington to clear up some sins there. I have seen the entrance before, but it was a master terminal hacking to open, which I didn't have back then. I clear out the area and pop back up on the other side within one of my older settlements. The turrets already took care of most of the sins there. And after bringing the quest item back to the railroad HQ, I get another quest near Bunker Hill. 
I decided to connect the power grid from the railroad HQ to Bunker Hill as well. I don't have the Bunker Hill yet and I already connected to it from the east side, but I have some more questions in the area. For example, saving the Pigman from a raider attack. The Pigman is a beautiful artist and a serial killer. Since he only seems to kill raiders, I don't mind at all and let him live of course. Since that's, well, exactly what I'm doing as well. He thanks me with a lovely note, which is my first love letter ever, so I keep it close at heart. To connect to Bunker Hill, I pushed my last workshop really close to Bunker Hill side, actually too close, causing me to already be able to access and clean up a chunk of Bunker Hill itself. I complete a few more quests for the railroad, connect the power grid to a safe house and then spend some time getting into the armory in the castle, as well as meet Ronnie Shaw, a deserting minute woman who likes to rejoin. The armory has a nice amount of materials as well as the option to make artillery, which can help me in the commonwealth if needed. With the castle fully upgraded and the general uniform equipped to Preston Garvey, who went to Sanctuary, I take a vertebrate from Sanctuary to the Nakano residence. Since Nakano residence is added later, when the Far Harbor DLC came out, the vertebrate actually flies above a great chunk outside the map, which is a bit buggy as I can't shoot the minigun at those points. Back in Far Harbor, I first go to Longfellow's cabin, which needs some extra goods and upgrading and then finally have the materials to go to the nucleus. Once there, I cannot even enter, and they just simply sent me way deeper into the island to drink some irradiated water from a fountain. Atom on the island seems to have some very, very heavy armed guys there. Makes you wonder if there's any serious organization behind it, because these guys look like war machines. While all other Atom believers so far just look like crazy, hair losing, radiation engulfed fanatics. To top that off, in passing by, I dropped two well-fortified way stations at both instances. This could go either way for me though, as long as I'm allied to them, the defenses are here to protect. Otherwise, well, good luck to them. I finally run into some gulpers, but overall it is very hard to progress through the island and that is mainly because there's nothing there. I can spend 5-6 way stations just building, meeting nothing, no, not even a monster or people or something to loot, which makes me run out of materials constantly as well. I wish there was slightly more to plunder on the island. I can't find cloth for instance, which normally it would be really easy just getting from scrappables and pre money for example. That's also the reason I don't bring much of these common materials. And another one of the biggest mistakes I keep making is I bring a lot of shipments with me. For example, I bring four shipments of wood. And after five way stations I realize I'm out of wood. How can I be out of wood? Since I don't have any base wood, in every way station I auto scrap a wood shipment and I leave it in the way station. Then I continue to build another way station and that's why I scrap another shipment because all the wood from the previous shipment are still in the previous workshop. And the result, I have to dissolve five bases while being encumbered. To get to Atom's Holy Shrine, I have to build a power grid all the way to the southwest of the island. There are several places of interest along the way, including a fast respawn place, which has been rare of late. Having my power grid extended from the northeast to the southwest means all other places are much easier to reach now too, as I can simply branch from the main grid. I quickly drink from Atom's well and follow the ghostly figure and walk to the prepared base. Normally you have to fight a ton of ghouls, but I already sniped those earlier. After retrieving the mother's icon from the shrine, I return to the Grand Zealot and finally enter the Nucleus building. I spent some time getting to know the people and help with the small quest around the area. Their devotion seems insane, but I guess if you're immune to radiation, you'd rather spend time with people sharing your anomalies and explore your true potential. One of the quests sends me to the Vim Factory, which is overrun by super mutants. I can get there with just one workshop if I go from Southwest Harbor. The only thing in between, a fiery sea, of wild water and burning oil. I decide to bridge to the other side anyway using concrete which worked well. The only exception being halfway you feel a slight burn so you best run fast. The Vim Factory is one of the larger buildings in game, lots of super mutants too, Primus, Warlord, but in the end I got the power regulator for system Mai. A little north of Atom Spring is a settlement called Echo Lake Lumber. This settlement can only be obtained by completing a side quest for Far Harbor called Turn Back the Fog. It is imperative that this quest is completed before siding with any faction, because if you're a hostile with Far Harbor before completing it, well, pretty much means you can never obtain the settlement. 
This in turn means you have to complete Living on the Edge, this help all quest givers of Far Harbor. In general terms, it is always advised to take all settlements in an area before siding against a faction, as it might lock you out from completing the challenges entirely. But this also means I have to go all the way to the northwest of the island. I can do several things here. I can build a power grid directly from the nucleus past the road leading to the north and will eventually reach Eagle Cove Tannery, where I need to pick up tools for the manor or I could continue building from Cliff's Edge Hotel and come from the east. The latter seem to be shorter and also picks up two permanent settlements along the way, Dalton Farm and National Park's Visitor Center. But in a way I want to control the entire route going around the island, so I think I just built to the north from the nucleus and go around to reconnect to the power grid in the north. Not only that, but I can also literally reach every place on the island with relative ease and prevent any breaking of the power grid as it is connected from both sides. I decided before anything to get Dima's memories. The back of the nucleus building had a large area filled with traps, protectors and turrets. It was all fun and games until now. But I finally run into a worthy foe. A legendary assault from Dominator, which would one-shot me if it got to me. With a great deal of luck I managed to get past one, however the moment I tried to activate the power needed to run the simulation, a second one appeared, and with even more luck I managed to kill that one too. Inside Dima's memory simulation it's a rather peaceful for once. I spent about an hour easing through the levels and obtaining all the information I needed to either help or blackmail the factions. I read people use mods just to able to skip this part, but it's actually really easy and fun as well. I found Captain Avery her body, and thanks to the information from the simulation in the Vim Factory, I know she was replaced by a synth and the cause was Dima. After that I went to the Harbour Grand Hotel and found the launch key a location of the nucleus as well. After I went back to Arcadia I thought I would have more freedom than I did. I assumed that if I would tell Dima that I keep his secret, I would later still be able to tell people for Harvard that Captain Avery was a synth, but instantly the quest got steered towards helping Arcadia, which I'm not sure I want yet. It's not all bad since Dima wants to keep the peace and place a synth in every location to help to do so, but he now forces me to replace the Atom Leader High Confessor Tectus with a synth. I do hope I still have his choice to turn that tide once I get back to the nucleus. Besides that, I'm not ready to pick a site, since I need Far Harbor to unlock the three remaining settlements first. The first one to reach is Natural Park's Visitor Center, but it will be locked just like Echo Lake Lumber until you clear the fog. Progressing north, I finally reach the Dalton Farm and kill the fog crawler. This opens up Dalton Farm and settlement that gives me a follow-up quest to avenge Cassie's husband, Daniel, who was killed by trappers. Luckily that quest is very close by the Nucleus launch key location and both will maybe take me for 5 workshops. Upgrading Dalton Farm was actually a lot of fun, platforming through the water gave me a great amount of space to build a large, spacious residential area. After that I went to Eagle Cove Stannery to pick up the power tools for the Mariner and I even ran into a giant hermit crab which was remarkably easy to kill. Machete Mike asked me to buy the power tools for me, but I didn't want to jeopardize the relation with the Far Harbor residents, so I declined him. After that I actually have to continue moving south for two locations, and I spent a few hours building towards French Cove Docks to get the nucleus launch keys, and then Broke's Head Lighthouse to take out a bunch of trappers. The trappers who killed Daniel. There were quite some troops there, but since you are some sort of Heimerdinger within the boundaries of your workshop, you just drop a bunch of turrets to take out your enemies while you cower within your cover. And a great example of that is the quest Rite of Passage, where you have to kill some Mirelugs and eventually a Mirelug Queen. Simply prepping a workshop, dropping four turrets including a rocket launcher and let the fireworks happen. Of course this works best outside, while inside you often have to rely on your own strength. Going deeper in I destroyed a trapper at Rayburn Point, which was a random quest I got at Longfellow's cabin, and even further west I picked up Demon's Fog Condenser's kill switch. This would allow me to bring down the Fog Condenser's in Far Harbor. Certainly I do not plan to do so yet, and with the Rite of Passage I can finally claim National Park's Visitor Center. I decided to actually make this a nice camping spot, as it's always intended to be in the first place. With a large protected trailer, living area and several shops and industrial plots, like lumber, which will turn into a newspaper office. This completed one of the two questlines to claim the last two remaining settlements given by Mitch, 
The other one is given by Small Birda and concerns Echo Lake Lumber. I have to prepare this place and clear some goals and then a um, cannibalistic trapper called Nelcom who tried to convince me to lure people there so I could feed him. I am pretty hardcore from time to time but unlike the pigmen this crazed lunatic didn't appeal to my style. I gave the nuclear launch keys to the high confessor. After that I went to Dima who altered Martin's holotape and returned to the high confessor with the tape. Dima wanted me to kill him but I convinced him to run. Dima arranged for a synth replacement and I got the protector of Arcadia perk which gives me a massive boost in resistance when below 20% health. Just the knowledge for myself that the real high confessor is still out there with the launch key will be sufficient to make sure things can still play out in a sacrificial way for the children of Atom. Another reason that I just wanted this path in the end was because of the promise I made to Kazuma's parents. We all know the big controversy that Kazumi, when killed, turns out not to be a synth, therefore I fulfill my promise to Kazumi's parents by sending her back home. The Mariner had a side quest as well. She was dying and needed someone to get to MS Azalea to kill the trappers there for her to be able to upgrade the hull. The leader build is a mandatory power grid objective, so skipping out on the quest seems a total waste. If you took Machete Mike's deal for the power tool, this quest chain doesn't even happen. So you can't actually take Manchette Mike's deal as well. But the Trapper Leader can be killed with the quest as well, of course. Small Berta is telling me to set up a camp in Echo Lake Lumber and I can finally start building there. But not before I clear all workshops around the map. Echo Lake Lumber is pretty rough terrain. With some adjustments, it's a pretty spacious area to set up housing for, well, 22 settlers. After picking up my remote from the nucleus, there was one last thing to do. Help the Mariner in vanquishing the Red Death. A Mayalurk with an exceptional size. I might come back one day to check on the settlements, but for now I'm truly done with Far Harbor and the island, so let's get back to the common world. At this point I was getting a bit worried entering settlements. Getting close to Coastal Cottage, North Haken Beach and Red Rocket Truck Stop often crashed the game. So I went actually to Nexus Mods, and where I previously added the mods through the in-game mod manager, I now use Vortex to add the mandatory and optional mods. With that I added a new mod called the Acer Maintenance Software. This mod required the Mod Configuration Menu mod and the Fallout 4 Script Extender, which I added as well. After installing everything I checked back in game and used the City Planner Desk to access Coastal Cottage while being in the slog. It scanned three problematic plots and I knew what potentially could be the problem. As plots grow in size, they might form clipping issues and other problems causing destabilizing issues. I knew for a fact that both of the settlement mentions had plots clipping through the roofs, and with the Acer Maintenance holotape I could scan those and even destroy them from a distance. Earlier I was not even able to enter Coastal Cottage at all, even vertebrates couldn't fly over it, but after removing one problematic plot, and too bad it was the fiber optics factory, I could enter the settlement without any issue. Then I noticed a scrap everything mod update and my heart jumped up. Even outside the standard settlements I was suddenly able to scrap a lot of many objects that previously gave nothing and now returned a lot of resources. I was sad that the scrap everything ultimate version wasn't available in the in-game mod list and also wanted to start over just to go on a day long scrapping frenzy. Most bugs I run through in my very long playthrough were now fixed and or addressed and only some combat crashes were left. I will try to place a city planner desk now at every settlement so I can quickly check from a distance if everything is going well in the settlements I want to travel to. Since I was at Coastal Cottage I finally passed by the Ord Parsons Insane Asylum and picked up the quest there. Jack Cabot needed me to pick up a package. I plan to not only check all settlements but also try cleaning up the quest list a little before progressing further south. And one reason this quest is important is because it will lead me straight to Linwood. In this area I have to sound the siren, which turn up some dead claws. After I spent some time exploring the settlements, for example Finch Farm had a magical great plastic advanced industrial plot and when I came near a fuse box gave me a quest. I had to add up 100 watt fuses in 3 sections, then add some 8 items in the mixture and use the mixer on the material feeder to create unknown meds. Which is kind of fun and deadly to do as well. When returning to the railroad, a messenger tells me Pam needs me. Pam then sends me to the Spectacle Island, which is interesting because I never played the railroad story. Since they are an obnoxious little group with a boring base and insignificant personalities. 
Maybe except for Tinker Tom, who is just crazy enough to be amusing. Next stop, then, Spectacle Island. But not before I spend some time clearing some instances near the combat zone and placing Tinker Tom's Mila on one of the roofs there. Exploring the combat zone and instances gave me a bunch of materials, which I'm more than willing to hold to the castle. And talking about the castle, it only had up around 15 beds and I already have 21 settlers, so work there to be done. After upgrading the castle, I go for the Charisma Bobble Hat, which can be obtained by following the Cabot questline. And after obtaining the serum, raiders used the rest of the beds to become really strong and they overtook Parsons' insane asylum. You join Jack Cabot in going there. I actually decided to free his father, who was imprisoned for nearly 400 years, while Jack and his family used his blood to prolong their own lives. He wants me to kill his entire family, which seems fair enough, since they have been leeching on him for so long, and hopefully I can convince Edward Keegan to join the cause as well, as I kind of like him. I decided to not just swim to Spectacle Island, but build a bridge there. Actually, it's more a bridge from the castle to Warwick, with a side fork to the Spectacle Island. This way I can quickly navigate and it leaves something to remember for future generations. Problem with building on water is that you can't use the overlap region, which means you can only progress half a workshop length before you have to place a new one, since you first have to build the bridge to place a new workshop. I was quite naive in thinking I had close to enough wood and had to go for a supply route three times before I could finish the entire bridge. Warwick Homestead sends me deeper in where I haven't been yet, so I can't claim that. Once I got close enough to Spectacle Island, the whole area has overlapped, so I can freely explore. Mainly found a lot of Mirelux and eventually a Mirelux Queen after I turned on the power. The amount of scrappable items and the insane space on Spectacle Island is almost baffling. Even found the Luck Bobblehead. More than 7000 wood will help me complete the entire bridge infrastructure. I made two southern branches on the bridge, one going to Warwick Homestead and the other one going to Atom Cat's garage, which I helped defeat some gunners. After that they got really fond of me. Since I'm finding the garage is an official challenge objective, I can finally strip that off my list as well. And then we came back to the root of all evil. Quincy. Early in the story, the Quincy Massacre is mentioned several times. Quincy was one of the greatest settlements in the Commonwealth and a main base used by the Minutemen. Their success was their undoing as gunners set their sight on the place. Three Minutemen, Tessa, Baker and the leader Clint, all former Minutemen, would betray the Minutemen after being sick of the internal bickering and gave the gunners the edge in defeating Colonel Ezra Hollis, who came to the aid of Quincy while the other Minutemen did not. Needlessly to say, as a new general of the Minutemen, I felt it to be my duty to take them all out. As I proceed further south, I get to Automatoy's factory where I have two quests, both to help Jones with some tools in the slog and kill the mutants to get to Warwick Homestead to join the Minutemen. And northeast of there are the Quinty Quarries. In there, a raider called Slog, I have to kill him, or want to, but a vertebrate beats me to it. Anyhow, good riddance. Him and his raiders are guarding another very interesting objective. Vault 88. Vault 88 is a massive space with multiple workshops. You start with activating the workshop in the main part and then explore side tunnels to explore additional workshops. You find many mole rats and other large foes in the process. The scrap everything mod becomes highly volatile to use here as you can easily scrap the world to oblivion in one of the side tunnels. Anyway, scorpions and on my level dead skull red scorpions and they are deadly, especially the legendary ones. Key is to get to the workshop active per tunnel and surround yourself with heavy turrets, which is the great thing about fighting within your own territory. Even without the scrapping mod you can scrap through the limestone walls, set up at least 3 heavy machine gun turrets before you scrap through it and prepare for combat. Also a lot of uranium veins can be scrapped for nuclear materials. After spending many hours figuring out how to build a vault and trying to get some basic residential areas set up, I helped the Overseer torture Glenn by putting him on the power bike, causing him to blow up half the vault. Vault 88 is a lot of fun, but also very time consuming. Luckily the Overseer sent me all the way back to Hallucigen Inc. to get some schematics, which helped me get out of the vault. First it was time to get to Warwick Homestead and finish the bridge. Warwick has a lot of large buildings, but with that scrapping mod I was able to create quite a decent area for building up residential areas. After setting up a decent camp, I went back to the railroad to report my success for the Merker safe house, aka Spectacle Island. I really have to dive deeper in the questline to obtain Bunker Hill settlement. Since I was there, I finally cleared out Boston Library to pick up the intelligence bobblehead. 
I had a quest open for the Brotherhood to shadow someone who has been stealing supplies called Duty and Dishonored. The game crashed whenever I had to go after him. Turns out, on Boston Airport, multiple different quests crash if the unofficial patch mod is active. Disabling the mod, temporarily, fixed the problem. I decided to get rid of the unofficial patch entirely. It's supposed to fix the game, but with all the mods, it's just clashing constantly. I pretty much did a run covering every settlement except the very northern ones, and then flew back to Vault 88 to follow the questline and leave a proper settlement behind. It's pretty tricky using both sim settlements and the vault items, but it was an incredibly fun experience. I rarely been this far south and never played the vault DLC, so it was something new for me this run. I found the Murkwater construction site and this place really looks small, almost as small as Hangman Alley. I decided to build a vault there, so it's much easier to build higher and it turned out to be a costly, time consuming, albeit satisfying undertaking. The new vault generators can pump out 150 to 500 power and the best part are the wall mounted conduits. As long as the wall is connected to a connected power source, you can draw power from the walls wherever you are. The outside might look a bit squarey and busty, but the inside is the best place you can be. I'm slowly moving towards Jamaica Plains and I had to clear it out. There was a lot of ghouls there and high level and pretty tanky. Actually my explosive radium rifle really does miracles here, because the limbs are incredibly brittle. They might need 10 body shots, but 2 leg shots and you can take them out of the fight as well. I run into some bugs near Jamaica playing with the conquest mod, every time I placed a camp I couldn't upgrade it to a workshop, because I was always out of the workshop bounds when opening the camp. Thought it was conquest being overall a little bit buggy, so I saved the game, loaded it without conquest and then reinstalled the mod. I was a bit worried what would happen, but the entire power grid and all the way stations were still intact, so it's fine. Only the workshops are gone. On high side, while scrapping the workshops and just leaving the way stations in, at least it got rid of the bugged workshop near Quincy. The bug persisted north of Jamaica Plain, so I decided just to give up on this route entirely and moved further from the south in the direction of Gunners Plaza. I cleared the outside of Gunners Plaza and covered the entire fort with three workshop regions. There was a lot of materials to scrap from the outside, so it was definitely worth my while. After an intense fight and several near-death experiences, I finally found Captain West and took him out. With that I found the small guns Babel had as well, both mandatory challenge objectives. And with that I took out all the gunner leaders I need for the challenge and can continue the direction of the main quest, being finding Virgil in the glowing sea. Unfortunately I spent some time upgrading some bases and forgot to save for multiple hours. So when one piece of vault wall clipped weirdly into another, the game crashed. So all I had left was well, this recording of it. i have been working around Vault 88 in Gunners Plaza and decided to go north towards Milton General Hospital. But I ran out of ammo pretty soon. And this is mainly caused by the super mutants. These warlords are incredibly tanky. They cost much more ammo than they worth. So I had no choice to go back north and first I went to visit Cleo and the other trader in Good Neighbor, also because I had several quests there still. After handing those in I got about 400 bullets and went on the third quest there called The Big Dick. I already did a lot of pre-work on this quest, so a fun piece of the gameplay is let me dig through massive tunnels on the Boston with Bobby No-Nos and some other guy I broke out of jail earlier. Bobby however didn't tell the truth about what we're doing and pitted me against Hancock and his lackey Fahrenheit. Something I could not appreciate as I had much different plans. So I shot Bobby down and went on my way since it was close to Diamond City and I lost a lot of ammo during the Big Dick quest I decided to buy some more ammo there. All this time the Brotherhood Squire was walking behind me and I really wanted to bring him home. I made a second power grid connection from Milton General Hospital all the way to Diamond City and having a second short route will help me get this out a lot faster and secure the power grid way better. I also had to go this way anyway because I found Relay Tower 0SC-527 along the way. Extending the dishes allowed me to find some signals including Big John Miller's distress signal. Unfortunately he has been dead for nearly 200 years once I got to him but at least I found a key for his safe. At long last I cross the southwest river towards the most southern settlement in the commonwealth and that it can be taken by conventional means. That's called Somerville Palace. That means there will be only two left. Eager to is Marina, a little to north and lastly Bunker Hill, which can only be obtained later in the main quest. 
Getting to Marine was rather easy. It didn't mean to kill Phyllis, but she was nuts and chose the Brotherhood option, so became hostile. Doesn't really matter. That will give me room to build a settlement without people trying to shoot me. I connected the direct line from Jamaica Plains to Egret Tours Marina, which crossed the line through the Milton General Hospital region, making this not only a perfect crossroad, but also shortcuts and directly routes from two sides to the Marine and Jamaica Plains, as well as a direct route from Diamond City to both settlements. In the end I chose not to dress up the marina like a vault building, but go the old fashioned style due to spatial area I could create there. This will be a very peaceful settlement with a diner, some small shops and farms. I decided to check every settlement I own, see if they are prepared for the end game and make adjustments when needed. Some settlements, with exceptions of the new ones of course, still have not reached their maximum amount of settlers, like Boston Airport and Covenant. It is debatable if they need to have the maximum, since they don't attract any themselves and Boston can't even build a recruitment beacon, but I'd be rather safe than sorry. First stop is Hangman's Alley. The happiness dropped to 60 and it's unclear why, since all stats except defense seem to be sufficient, and instantly it's going up when I arrive. I built some more defenses and leave for Oberland Station. Oberland is doing remarkably well. I had some defenses there as well and sent three settlers from there to Boston Airport. My next stop is Grey Garden and I see a lot of people stuck on the edge, so I make some adjustments to the layout. Afterwards, since their happiness is sufficient, I just add some defense and send three people from there to Covenant. Unlike Boston, I might need some more infrastructure, like beds in Covenant, to support that many, but I will visit that plane soon enough. Sunshine Tiding Co-ops has not been visited at all by me since I set it up. The place looks simply amazing and spacious and has sufficient of everything. I even see a crystal cavern which I haven't seen yet, so I explore the cave. It looks amazing and accessible from the top, but I couldn't find much inside. I could continue this, but I'm very close to Nuka World and I'm in dire need for some excitement. I spent way too much time cleaning up the entrances to the Nuka World. I already cleared out the gunners guarding it way earlier, so that way is free to go in. The gauntlet took some time, but wasn't overly hard. What was hard is when facing the overboss Coulter, the arena was all glitched. After I got out, I became the overboss and met the other leaders. Max of the operators was actually a high class person with an attitude, but I liked her style. Nisha from the Disciples was intense, so I liked her even more. And lastly, Mason of the Pack actually made the most sense and felt calm and only a little bit wacky. Nuka World has multiple very large zones and it is my job to clear them and plant the flag for the faction I want to assign to that zone. Essentially aligning yourself with that faction and pissing off the other factions. I must choose carefully who gets the zone, do I seek balance or just spoil one of the groups? Additionally, some freaky girl totally in love with everything Nuka hands me some glasses to find Cappy symbols on the wall, which I can only see with the glasses on. I did spend most of the time without my helmet on, but with those glasses I'm not sure I make a good impression on the evil crime lord. I also spent too much time in the Nuka Cade. Turns out explosive rifles work exceptionally well in cheating whack-a-mole. I think I spent about 3 hours scrapping in Nuka Town USA and another 3 hours in the Galactic Zone while using about 7 workshops. Another hour was spent trying to get the power grid going after I scrapped, because all the floors and platforms that weren't debris or sidewalks couldn't hold a telephone pole. Not to mention going under and over lower arches and high walls. The Nuka Guardians in the Galactic Zone were literally the first mobs in a long time that really hurt. If an explosion hits you, you tend to get crippled and have a hard time to get away from the consecutive shot. There are several instances in the Galactic Zone and the goal is to find as much as Star Cores as possible to power up the massive machine in the middle. Zones like the Robco Battle Zone and Among the Stars provide fun interactions as well as plenty of robotic enemies. Outside the Galactic Zone, two Cappy symbols can be found, one immediately to your left when leaving the starry hallway sloping up towards the center and the other one when going right from the main building with all the Star Cores and going to the Employee Zone right behind it immediately facing right when entering the region. After clearing the zones, I assigned the Galactic Zone to the operators, as the smooth style fit their style nicely. Since I already used 8 settlements and dissolved none, I had no choice but to make sure they were all gone before I could continue. I know I'm still missing 2 star cores, I should be able to find them in the Galactic Zone, so I sure I need to go back for them. Firstly, however, I want to go to the Hubologist Zone in the south, as I have 6 suits and 6 helmets stuck in my inventory that need to go there. 
Getting to the camp wasn't hard, only about 3 workshops, but knowing it will trigger a follow-up quest where I have to clear out a dumpyard with a rocket, I decided to pass by the herbologist camp and build workshops straight towards the junkyard, which was about 6. I had the oversized bottle bug again in the junkyard and decided that another mod can be used to correct this bug called Nuka World Bottle Scenery Fix. After testing the mod, the mod works absolutely just fine. I sent the hubologists to their beloved hub by fixing their spaceship and after spinning a bit too long they all died, which was, well, unexpected from an entertainment park object. Afterwards I created a grid towards the dry rock gulch and grabbed the quest from the sheriff to clear the area from old outlaws. These turned out to be a ton of bloodworms. The area itself is pretty short, especially compared to the 5 instances in the galactic zone and has only mine instance with a bloodworm queen. To unlock it, grab the quest from the three robots you find within Dry Rock Gulch or talk your way out of it with a high charisma check. This will give you the unlock code for a save which has the key to the mines. I could have skipped most of it as I simply scrapped the save open and got the key. I gave Dry Rock Gulch to the disciples and I feel like I'm doing pretty much the same as everyone else so far, with the exceptions that half of the player seems to be disgusted by the disciples and give them nothing. Well, I might surprise you there. Regardless, the operators would have been the best choice to give all camps, as they pay the best, but I don't need money at this stage. The safari adventure is all the way to the north, when entering a muscled guy called Sito comes running and tells you about his family being in danger. His family is a bunch of primates, as he was raised by them. The park is infested with gator claws, mutated crocolis creatures. I help Sito figure out who is responsible and clear out the camp. Needlessly to say, I will give Safari World to the pack, as probably most people do again. To the east lies the world of refreshments, and this zone is mostly instanced. Many Nucalurks, a tougher form of Myrlurks, swim through the Quantum River halls. The Quantum River, just like places in Far Harbor, does not like explosive rifles, and the game insta crashes when I hit the Quantum Water with a bullet. So, I clear most things with my trusted sniper rifle. In the engine room, on top of the Nuka Coda factory, I find a lot of assaultrons and have an intense fight while dodging insta-kill beams. Outside the Nuka Lurk Queen and several kings, as well as a plenty of other Nuka Lurks, allow me to burn through most of my remaining ammo. I give the world of refreshments also to the disciples. And last one remains, called Kitty Kingdom. I did not enjoy Kitty Kingdom. I must have burned 10 redways or more and 8 redixes just to get through it. But the instant part was fun. The main goal is to hunt down Oswald the Outrageous and stop the mist sprays from spraying radioactive mists. To do that, three objectives must be cleared. The fun house is actually fun. A lot of rotating areas and somewhat of a parkour. The second one are the employee tunnels and it's just a tunnel system with some goals. The last one, if you did it in the correct order, would be the theater, where you shortly fight the goal. Before dying, the, he teleports away and after you cleared all three instances, you can confront him in a final confrontation on top of the castle. I decided to spare the guy and send him after his wife Rachel, who is looking for a cure for the ferrets. I assign the Kitty Kingdom also to the disciples, which have now three areas. Back in Nukatown, USA, I told Cage about all my successes and he told me to talk to Shank about the Commonwealth settlements. Considering those were mine, this was the point I started getting annoyed a bit, so we shall see how I can and will proceed after talking to Shank. I found all crappy, so I turned to Frika Shera to tell her the letters, which spelled refreshing. This allowed me to use a keypad to meet the boss. Inside I found a vault with John Caleb Red Burton still alive as I had in a machine. He begged me to kill him in exchange for some super nukes, either that or I'd get a shiny jumpsuit from Shera if I prolonged his suffering. I did the right thing, being I prevented him having Shara around him for another century, as this girl was driving me crazy within 5 minutes already. I spent several hours connecting the grid to the Nuka power plant, needed about 6 workshops for it. Once I got there I realized even at this stage I couldn't activate the power. I had no key to get in, but I could press the button regardless if I walked behind on a ledge. Not that a key mattered anyway, with a workshop nearby I can simply scrap my way towards it. The raiders want to move to the commonwealth and ask me to sacrifice a settlement. Too bad all settlements except Bunker Hill are already under my control, but I want to try regardless. I give up Coastal Cottage all the way to the north. While on the way there I pass by several settlements and disable at least the cages, because Sanctuary for example almost called daily for helping aiding in another attack. 
I fix some power line, break up north of Starlight Drive in, and move further west. After doing a bunch of quests for the railroad, I arrive at the USS Constitution, which I help get rid of some scavengers. I help all the way up to the last part where I have to get some parts from nearby factories. Moving higher up north, I tell the settlers from Coastal Cottage to leave by bribing them for 1000 caps. After hanging around a bit, they don't seem to be in a rush, so I move to Far Harbor to check on my settlements there. I accidentally hit a settler with explosive bullets while helping in Dalton's farm, so I best stay away from there as well for a while. The other settlements however are doing just fine. Since I have one more quest there, I help the Brotherhood clear out Arcadia, serves Dima right for lying to me constantly. I had a very bad day, since I actually scrapped a Disciple, I couldn't complete the Raider Settlement quest. After building up the settlement, hopefully attracting more, I went to start a drive-in to continue the Mechanist quest. I had to build the robot workbench and Ada jumped in there, but I could only edit her legs, which was bug number 2 that same day. People told me to shoot her to low health and it would be fine by just rebuilding the robot workbench. Unfortunately, she became hostile cause I shot her with explosive bullets. The last bug in the sequence was in Covenant, it almost feels like the entire camp sunk into the grounds of sorts as I couldn't target anything on ground level. Same happened later to Oberlin Station. Regardless, I made the best of it and built a second layer to house all the new settlers in Covenant. I returned to a save and fixed Ada by using my sniper rifle instead and that worked just fine. Afterwards I made a beautiful flying robot out of her. The check in with your crew book I fixed by talking to Shank and he pushed me to the next stage where I had to force a nearby settlement to supply the raider settlements. I was summoned to the gauntlet where I challenger was there for me. He didn't even scratch me though. So I can stay the overboss a bit longer, mainly because I could pacify him and the quest locked until I shot him. Back in the Commonwealth I continued the pre-quest for the Mechanist and at this point Ada sends me to Fort Hagen area to get a radio beacon from a robot brain. Luckily I wanted to go there already since I need to check Fort Hagen itself for the last missing turbo pump. This I need to send the USS Constitution out. I checked Corviga and General Atomics factory already, both of them did not contain the missing item, so it must be Fort Hagen? Near Lead there I run into Relay Tower 0BB-915 and I nearly forget I needed 5 of those for the challenge as well. Luckily I already have a power grid nearby so it wasn't too much of a chore to connect to it. I picked up a signal from a settler in Fiddler's Green Estate, missed a bunker it seemed last time I was there. I had plenty of food and even a drink so not sure why the settler died there. I also connected the power to Fort Hagen Satellite Array and killed Ivy the Rust Devil's leader completing two objectives at once. I decided to finally go to the Glowing Sea to find Virgil. Beside Egret Tours Marina and Somerville place also really needed the visit. Especially the latter had some trouble signing the settlers to the residential plots, so I was glad to help. Moving south through the Glowing Sea would prove exceptionally hard as you couldn't sleep anywhere to take in constant radiation damage. After a few workshops I had to give up and took some time to prepare better actually in Egret Tours Marina. Most sold item at this point? Fiber optics. With the fiber optics I can make radiation arches which will help me massively in the glowing sea. Once powered they will instantly remove all radiation. With a combination of roasted bloodworm from Nuka World and vegetable soup in my stomach I rushed back in, now receiving less than 1 radiation per second. The glowing sea throws a lot at you, even at my level it can seriously hurt you. For example the dead skull red scorpions. I decided to quickly throw down a lot of workshops in a row to not waste too much time building workshops. I found a red rocket along the way, instant, and it was the only place I didn't get any radiation damage so I just placed a bag and a bedroll, allowing me to save at least. A little further down the road I find Atlantic offices, a few goals, not much reward. I have to return because I run out of gears, I had to fall back all the way to Oberlin station. And when I was there I noticed the silver shroud items in my inventory again. It's a high time to make a small detour to Good Neighbor and finish this quest before going back. When talking to Ken Conley after tuning in onto the Silver Shark radio near Good Neighbor, I got a costume and became a superhero, which involved doing a lot of good guy chores. To offset my karma again, I helped Coastal Cottage by getting another settlement to supply them, as well as finish their base. Afterwards, I spent way too much time dressing up Jezebel and Ada to look like evil flying raids, which was exceptionally amusing and busting through the mechanist lair wasn't too hard. I confronted Isabel Cruz, who was the mechanist with what Jezebel said earlier. 
that the best way to save the humans was to kill them. And she saw her wrongdoings. Needless to say I spare her, all that talent gone would just be a waste. I spent some hours revamping the Meganis Lair since I can't build a recruitment beacon. It isn't a mandatory settlement to max out, you must obtain it though. And afterwards I focus on clearing the quests like visiting Mr. Tiddle's shrine and some other side quests. I noticed Vault 88 is already on 32 settlers, which means it isn't kept like the rest. So I built, or I should say rebuilt, another wing. There's something not power there though, but for now I'm unable to find it. Afterwards I went back all the way south. I need to reach Virgil. I got quite far. I managed to create a power grid all the way to the crater of Atom and met Mother Isolde. Afterwards I connected the route to the decayed reactor site and before I was forced to go back to sleep. I didn't bring enough natural radiation repellent like Brahmin milk or refreshing beverages, so the lack of sleep got to me since camps make you tired fast. And third time must be the charm as I take a deep breath of fresh air and take the long route south again. When I finally met Virgil, it was a major milestone. This means pretty much the entire power grid is done. All that is left is some quests, the main story of course and several build objectives. I picked up Hancock and shoved him into the upgraded mechanist armor. I needed him anyway to finish the silver shroud and this saves time searching him every time to hand in quests in between. I get massive penalties walking around with a companion though, so hopefully not too long. While heading north I got a new quest from the railroad to secure an asset and even got to pick the way we do it. Definitely a progression in their story. And afterwards I went to Bunker Hill. Still I have some raider bosses to deal with for the Silver Shroud questline. Adapter Trader gave me a drop which I never noticed until now, since I already cleared out the area she wanted to be cleared, I got sent straight to Kessler, the Bunker Hill's leader. Gessler gave me an important mission and this might help me procure Bunker Hill as last missing settlement. So I gladly take it. Kill more raiders or gunners, no matter. Also Joseph Voldy gives me the mission Fallen Hero, which is just miscellaneous, so hard to keep track of and I have to find his grandfather's head for him in Old Scarlet Sinkhole. Hancock has fun interactions by the way, also with people around Good Neighbor about owing him and more. I finished the Silver Shroud questline and actually managed to save Kent Connolly while finishing off Sinjin and his followers. I had to redo that a few times because I never managed to save Kent and not sure why I go through all the trouble to save him anyway because he's useless. Afterwards I move on the Courser in the CAT runes to progress the main story. And after I killed it I give the chip to the railroad to decode it and then return all the way to Virgil. This all sounds easy. But it takes a long time playing survival. Of course the vertebrate grenades helped a bit. Before I returned to Virgil I passed by Nuka World so handed in some side quests as well as talked to Shank again. I noticed the home sweet home quest is a bit offset of sorts. The marker points you to the next part of the quest while forgetting to send you to Shank first. Every time I talk to Shank I fix the quest again. I also finally grabbed the power arm in the galactic zone by simply building a ladder all the way up and obtained the 35th star core. Since the windows are broken I can jump in through them. Anyhow I fly back to Coastal Cottage afterwards and kill Sinner and his gang. The settlers turn on me most likely because I hit them with explosive bullets but the disciples don't mind so neither do I. Now my first order of business is getting my Nuka World perks. With that I can get Nuka World Red Rocket which believe it or not is a settlement in Nuka World. Having the bottling plant would have gotten me close enough to get it anyway. I first decided to get Kingsport Lighthouse for the Raiders and I just bribed them out of it. Afterwards I sent Shang there as well as traveling is becoming quite troublesome to Nuka World and back all the time, despite being able to use Vertebird. Afterwards Coop Manor, which I will also secure as the third settlement for the Raiders and I just attack it. Being bored and all, killing Minutemen surely isn't a pleasure, but I can't rely on my settlers to carry me through this world. After visiting Preston however, he is pissed off his mind and our friendship is ended. But he still obeys me as his general, so that's all that matters. His ignorance and bossing me around securing the commonwealth doesn't help in making up my mind which sides to take. I take this log as an other supply settlement. And Shank warns me something is up and the operators turn on me. This will be the final Nuka World chapter for me and I regret it was the operators and not the pack turning on me. I wanted to secure Nuka World for the operators and the common world for the disciples, but destiny carves its own path despite your efforts to bend it to your will. 
Fighting the operators wasn't easy, they have cluster frags and heavy heavy firepower. But an earlier shortcut I made on the power plant surely helped get the dead leaders fast. With Max, William and earlier Lizzie dead, it's time to return to Cage and I received the pack alpha and chosen disciple perks. Few more things left to do. After activating the power, there's a small employee area on the west side of Dry Rock Gulch's outer walls, which is a blast to shoot through a double horde of ghouls. And of course, in the world of refreshments, there is a Beverly Chair Lab with tons of loot and several cobalt schematics. This will allow you to make the quantum grenade and some upgrades for the water gun and other nuka related weaponry. And last but not least, get Nuka World Red Rocket and give it to the pack. As well as the Galactic Zone, not my favorite choice, but loyalty must be rewarded. I would have preferred to give everything in Nuka World to the pack, but I can't reassign the Disciple Parks to the pack. After that, I might have to return one more time to check on Red Rocker Nuka World, but other than that, I have no business walking the long road to Nuka World ever again. I decided to tear down Boston Airport and send everyone, except Dance, and the Provisioner to other settlements. A good thing too, because some, like the Warwick Homestead and Murkwater construction site, seem to be unable to attract many more settlers. With all settlers allocated and Boston not needing to have the maximum amount of settlers due to not being able to build a recruitment beacon there, I can set up Boston Airport to build a relay to the Institute. With the help of the railroad, I set up all the components in one magnificently built base. I added the Sicilian Espresso Machine to top things off and to complete that objective. I also completed my last quest, Kit in a Fridge. I shot bullets straight dead the moment he asked me to buy the kit for me. I also upgraded the vault. And in there I actually made a lot of the machinery from the Contraption Workshop add-on. Like the ammunition plant, and the food plant. The funny part is they are actually meant to be built early on, so they help you get food and ammunition. But I kind of just bought those whenever I need it. The idea is use this to your advantage and make sure you have a base early on that can provide you with extra food and ammunition. The vault however is a great place for this and I made an ammunition plant to start pumping out the .45 ammo. The machinery is easy to make, you just connect them to the power grid, slap a terminal on the same power grid and you can order the plant to start producing. Afterwards I need a food processor, which is somewhat less useful, but at least my vault dwellers will have tater chips to enjoy. The fountain can be made after obtaining the picket fences from the boss room in the Sorgus Ironworks and this will unlock decoration statues and is made from 20 copper. The throne comes from Nuka World and can be built going to decorations Nuka World Kitty Kingdom. A little south of Warwick I find a band of raiders, led by a raider called Rex, and in his lair I find the Agility Bobblehead. Then a little detour and a minor grid expansion near Quincy to get to Poseidon Energy and find the Endurance Bobblehead. Last but not least, the Big Guns Bobblehead is located a bit south of the entrance to the Glowing Sea, just need one workshop to get there. Vault 91, occupied by dead junkies and gunners. And not sure what happened there, but it seems like this big family decided to test out some camps and died on a high. In a bobblehead stand in Sanctuary, all bobblehead completed the bobblehead objectives. There I also progressed to the Mama Murphy storyline a bit. I built her chair as well, completing the last build objective. At long last I can go to the institute. No need to build any workshops or power grants, just an instant, free to explore. I meet father and the heads of the departments. While exploring this somewhat annoyingly built instance, I also find Virgil's old laboratory, which means I have to make another trip to his house to bring it to him, his experimental serum as I promised. I keep all channels open for now, not openly turning against any faction, but I do follow the railroad questline. I might murder them later, but I need Bunker Hill above anything else, which is quite literally the last step to complete this challenge. The railroad contact, a guy called Liam, aka the Patriot, wants to let loose 13 cents at once and requests my help. I don't feel like openly turning against the institute right now, but they don't seem to give me many options this way. Well, let's see where it goes. Dr. AO upgrades my Pip Boy, allowing me to finally be able to fast travel in survival, albeit only to the Sith ruins. After I start working for the railroad to rescue all sins and gave them tons of weapons in underground undercover, I can fast travel to the institute from anywhere in the commonwealth. I have to reach the Battle of Bunker Hill quest, working for the institute for now, so I must start doing quests for them. 
After helping Fonda only once, capturing a synth in Levitalia, I get the quest I hoped for, the battle for Bunker Hill. Father explicitly asked me to keep it a secret, but I have another plan. I inform both the Railroad and the Brotherhood about the Battle of Bunker Hill and the Four Sins trap there. The battle is glorious, me being friendly but all just walk through the fight like a king, untouchable, uncharted, while Sins, Railroad Heavies and Star Paladins fight each other to the death. I walk to the Four Sins and call out each shutdown code and walk out again without spilling blood only destroying some turrets. Even while helping father, Bunker Hill will be mine. Kessla can't believe what I brought down on her town and surrenders the workshop to me. In doing so, the very last settlement is mine. After the meeting with the Institute heads, I somewhat got lured into mass fusion and didn't pay sufficient attention not to be instantly hostile with the Brotherhood. Oh well. It can't be helped, being Elder Maxon's puppet or being the supreme leader for the Institute was somewhat of a no-brainer anyway. I clear out the Brotherhood troops in Mass Fusion and find the Strength Bobblehead. I go back down and open the door to the elevator using the ID card I found earlier and enter the Fusion Chamber where I procure the Beryllium Agitator and after some more Brotherhood encounters I leave the area. I pass by Boston Airport and I can't use the workshop anymore but the massive 400 plus defense rocket bulwark was still loyal to me and in the progress completely wipes out the entire brotherhood on the floor. And Ada was wreaking havoc as well. This was unplanned but glorious at the same time. I had to dispose of some old Which friends and relatives including Paladin Dan, Knight Lucia and Proctor Ingram who were near the base. Unfortunately, but this story is nearing its end and with that many will fall. I have been bringing Valentine along as well. Hey, I tried to get 750 repetition to get the uh, Eddie Winter questline, which is the only companion objective in the entire challenge, and he likes me hacking terminals and helping people, but other than that, I don't have much going for me except just spending time with him to get the reputation. Both the Institute and the Railroad call for the ending of the Brotherhood. The Railroad method appeals to me more. The Brotherhood attempts to assault the Railroad, and following this attack I can go to the Cambridge Police Station. There happened to be a vertebrate on the roof, and I need to secure that vertebrate. I have no problem disposing of rice, but even pacifying Halen is not enough, I have to kill her. After flying to the Pritwin, I am surprised to see that no one is hostile there. My mission is to place a few bombs and get the hell out of there. Talking to Kels, however, quickly turns things around, as he sees me as an intruder that I am. I dispose for everyone on the ship and fly away, seeing it blown to bits. The end of the second Zeppelin era. And now comes the hard part. Both Railroad and Institute force me to kill each other, no matter how hard I try to get out of it. I spend a good while just thinking while standing next to Desdemona. I could end right there and be done with it or give them a final go at the Institute. I decided to help the Railroad as much as I don't agree with their methods. At least I don't have a very large force around me that I cannot control. Destroying the institute was painful, as I loved the aesthetics of the place. Talking to my son was even more painful, and after blowing up the reactor we got set back into the relay room. Little Sean was there. It was almost emotional. I got a chance to be with my boy and I know he'd have the DNA and the memories once belonging to the real Sean. In the end, this was the ending I needed. Excuse me. Even after all this, Preston doesn't want to talk to me. I considered disposing of him too, but I can't make up my mind yet. At last, Valentine gives me the quest to hunt Eddie Winter, and after obtaining all 10 holotapes, we confront him in his bunker. After looting his piece, called Eddie's piece, uh, 44 with bonus limb damage, that part is completed as well. And after checking the settlements, a few were a bit bugged, so I had to go there to reinitialize the stats, and after that, all the settlements were pretty much set. My level is 143. The Commonwealth has a fully functioning power grid, and this playthrough ends here. My first recording started the 15th of August 2021, and my last recording is 8th of April 2022. That's close to 8 months. I have seen many things, I didn't see in all the playthroughs, and I had a great time overall.